live on a Friday night at Utah Grizzlies Hockey as it's the second of a three-game series between the Grizzlies and the Allen Americans. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza. It's the middle of a three-game set. Utah last night lost 7-4. to four, but Utah overcame a 5-2 deficit, scored three goals, one late in the second period by Taron Pfizer and Aaron Tho, six and a half minutes into the third period. But it just wasn't enough as Allen got an empty netter with a little less than two minutes left in regulation. Then Hank Crone completed the hat trick with just over a minute left in regulation. And the Americans got the victory. You, uh, Allen has won six of their last seven games against the Grizzlies. We'll actually make it seven of their last eight. Grizzlies are three and seven against Allen this year, but they look to turn things around here tonight as Trent Miner will be in net. He'll be going up against Chase Perry. Perry saw 51 shots last night, stopping 47 of them. Uh, Miner was the backup for the Grizzlies as Lucas Preet got the start, stopping 28 of 34. Grizz have been one of the hottest teams in the league as they are 5-1 and one in the month of March. They've got a standing point in seven of their last eight road games. And for Utah, they're looking to find a way to climb ahead of Allen in these standings. This is a huge game. In the Mountain Division standings is right now Utah, Allen, and Wichita are each tied for third place. As they each have 59 standings points, Kansas City is in second place with 60 standings points. Wichita is at Kansas City. That game's going to face off about the same time the Grizzlies game is, so we'll do a little bit of scoreboard watching on the Kansas City-Wichita game, and obviously it's a big game in the standings for the Grizzlies. Utah's been a pretty good road team. They've got a record of 15, 14, and 3 away from the friendly confines of Maverick Center. Allen is 7-3 and three in their last 10 games, and if you take away the first Month and a half of the season, Allen just about has as good a record as the Idaho Steelheads. So should be interesting. Allen's been incredibly hot offensively as they've got 35 goals over their last seven games. But the Grizzlies have been a hot team offensively as well as they have scored 59 goals over their last 14 games, a little bit more than four per contest. So it should be interesting tonight as we're hanging out in the lobby at Maverick Center. And when we come back to the Utah Grizzlies pregame report, I'll talk with Guy Krenz and get his thoughts on things as we're in business on a Friday night, and you're listening to the Grizzlies pregame report presented by America by Rio Tinto Kennecott. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account. Welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Krenz. It's a battle of two good teams over in Allen as we're hanging out in the lobby at Maverick Center. Yes, it is St. Patrick's Day. The Allen Americans are wearing green St. Patrick's Day themed jerseys, and they'll be wearing those during the game. The Grizzlies, I believe, will be wearing their white jerseys with black numbers and professional green trim. Looks like Guy's green is a little bit more professional than mine green is. Mine's a little bit of a lighter shade. Uh, but Guy, you know, last night the Grizzlies did score four goals. They just about overcame a 5-2 to two deficit, but just wasn't enough. But the Grizzlies did get an outstanding performance from Taron Pfizer, who's got four goals in his last three games. And he, along with Zach Sekos and Cameron Wright, have really carried the Grizzlies as of late. Yeah, Tyson, they're playing great hockey right now, and I think that's what you want to see if you're Coach Kanasiewicz and the Utah Grizzlies. You want to see your top players performing, and they are. And I really think back to last night's loss, I think that the Grizzlies did play a solid game for the most part. Uh, they just let the game get away from them. They're just too much Allen Americans, too much offense. If the Grizzlies want to win this one, they have to find a way to keep the score low. It's been amazing what Cameron Wright's been able to do over his last 10 games. He's got 15 points, and it seems like it's the extra effort plays that he makes. And, uh, you know, he's somebody that can be a pest for the other team, but he's somebody that can get in the, those scoring areas. And, you know, he leads the all-league rookies in shots. He leads the Grizzlies in shots by a wide margin. And he's able to get those great A chances, which I think would actually – it might end up making the difference against a team like Allen. If I could use one word to describe Cameron Wright, it would just be persistent. You mentioned him as being a, a pest. They call him the rat for a reason. I mean, he's very persistent, always taking shots. He will not be denied. And we saw that in the Kansas City series. He just willed a goal into existence and really got the Grizzlies back into that game. He's been fantastic all season long. 
Aaron Tho was a plus three last night. He had a goal in the third period. He is a plus 14 in his last 14 games. He's been amazing. The captain, Connor McDonald, has also got a great plus minus recently. And those two aren't, they don't normally play together all that often. So it's not like they're getting pluses together. Um, you know, I think about some other defensemen that have really produced, but Aaron Tho has been somebody that's kind of fallen under, under the radar a little bit, but he's really gotten the job done for Utah lately. Yeah, the Grizzlies defense core has played really great as of late. And uh, I'm hoping that last night was just an outlier because I really feel like if the Grizzlies are going to win here tonight, I think it starts with the Grizzlies playing good defense. And I think the anchor on that has got to be Connor McDonald. He's been leading the Grizzlies all season long. He's got the C on his chest, and he's going to have to lead this defense core into playing a good game against Allen tonight. Trent Miner will get the start in net. Lucas Preak stopped 28 of 34 last night. And for Trent, you know, I think the thing is – control the rebounds because Allen is a club that likes to get out in front of the net. And so I think for minor, you know, there was a couple of redirections for goals. I think the Grizzlies defensive units got to do a good job boxing it. Allen out in front of the crease. I think Trent Miner's also got to do a good job controlling rebounds if the Grizzlies want to win tonight. Yeah, I agree. And ten, Trent Miner, since the start of the 2023 calendar year, has really turned his season around. He's been playing great ever since then. And so I think we've going to see another good showing from him tonight, but you're right. I think it starts with the Grizzlies clearing the crease, making life easy for Trent Miner here tonight uh, because the Allen Americans, they're a very crafty team. They like to move the puck around methodically, get the goalie moving, screen him a little bit and make life tough for him. So the Grizzlies uh, have to make the night easy for Trent tonight. Who's going to be your pick for the Optum first school of the game. Optum is putting you at the center of everything we do. Optum is committed to making healthcare work better leading the way to better experiences, better health, and lower costs for you. For me, I think I'm going with Cameron Wright as my pick for the Optum first school of the game. I know he's got 20 this season. I got a feeling he's going to get it. Who do you think is your pick for the Optum first school of the game? Well, Tyson, that's a solid pick, but I think I got to go with the hot hand. I need to go with Taron Pfizer here tonight. He played excellent last night in the loss, and I think he's just going to continue to roll on his heater. I'm going with Taron Pfizer. When you come back, we'll give you the lineups for both teams. This is the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal, whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life. I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it, and I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First, and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. Well, welcome back to Utah Grizzlies Hockey. I'm Tyson Whiting here with Guy Carenza. Faceoff is shortly over in Allen, Texas at Credit Union of Allen Event Center. Let's see if we can get the lineups for both teams. That doesn't look like they're posted as of yet, but we do know who's going to be a net for the Grizzlies. It'll be Trent Miner. who will be making his 27th appearance this season. Miner's got a record of 11, 12, and 2 with two shutouts, a 3.12 goals against average. And 910 save percentage. Miner is 6'1 and 198 pounds. Hot off the presses, tonight's starting lineup. The defensive pairing is Aaron Tho, number 28. Tho scored a goal in the third period last night. He's got five goals this season, four of them in a Grizzlies uniform. He has 10 assists, nine of those are in a Grizzlies uniform. He's appeared in 53 games this season. Tho will be lined up next to Jacob Semick, the newest Grizzlies, making his second pro appearance. Semek made his pro debut last night and had three shots on goal and was a minus one. Semek played the last four seasons at Arizona State University, where he was a college teammate of Johnny Walker. Unfortunately, Johnny's out of the Grizzlies lineup once again tonight. Though and Semek are the starting defensive pairing for Utah. Semek spells his last name S-E-M-I-K. 
The other defensemen are expected to see tonight include the captain, Connor McDonald, who's got three goals and 11 assists this year. McDonald leads the Grizzlies in plus-minus at plus five. James Scherr has four goals and 15 assists in 40 games. He'll be wearing number 10. We'll also see Kyle Pouncey, who's got three goals and six assists in 53 games. And we'll also see Bryson Martin. Former third-round pick of the Buffalo Sabres. Martin has two goals and nine assists in 45 games. Martin had one assist in last night's contest, and Bryson Martin has five assists in his last seven games. So he's starting defensive pairing as Tho and Semek. Starting forwards for the Grizzlies. Taron Pfizer has got four goals in his last three games. Pfizer leads the Grizzlies with 22 goals this season. He also leads the club with nine power play goals. He's my pick for the optum first goal of He's actually, uh, is he your pick, first pick for Optum or my first my uh, pick? That you had right. And I, I had, had right Pfizer. and you had Pfizer, but I was thinking yeah. about Pfizer. Taron Pfizer, my pick for the Optum first goal of the game. Zach Sekos is also in the starting lineup. He had a goal last night. He's got 11 goals and 10 assists in 25 games. And Cam Strong's in the starting lineup. Strong has 10 goals and 10 assists in 56 games. So the starting forwards again are Pfizer, Sekos, and Strong. We will also see Keaton Jamison in there wearing number 12. He's got 11 goals and 14 assists this season. Dylan Fitz is second, is third on the club with 15 goals. He has 15 assists as well. He's been outstanding over the last month. Cameron Wright, who is my pick for the Optum first goal of the game, he's got 20 goals and 26 assists this season. He leads the club with 46 points. Jared Powers in there for the sixth time as a pro. He's got one assist this season. Tyler Penner, the Grizzlies Ironman, is appearing in his 59th consecutive game this season and 149th game overall. Uh, Pender uh, has played in every game since he started the 2021-22 season. He's 5'11 and 182 pounds. Second year Grizzly out of Colgate University. Dakota Raby, the Michigan man, has got 11 goals and 23 assists this season. Raby's been outstanding as of late as he's got a point in 11 of his last 13 games. We'll also see the second year pro out of Merrimack, Christian Simeone. He's got two goals and three assists this season. Vladislav Mikalchuk had an assist last night. Vladdy has five goals and six assists in 37 games. So starting forwards again are Strong, Sekos, and Pfizer. We also see Jamison, Fitz, along with Wright, Power, Penner, Raby, Simeone, and Mikalchuk. Scratches for the Grizzlies tonight. Defenseman Corey Thomas, as well as Johnny Walker. And Victor Bartley's out of the lineup once again. And the Grizzlies are also without Jordan Martel, the Roosters. He's missing his fifth straight game. It's Grizzlies and the Americans starting lineup for the Allen Americans, led by first-year head coach Chad Costello, who's the greatest player in Allen Americans history. He's a future ECHL Hall of Famer. His assistant was a great defenseman in his playing day, Aaron Gens. Allen's got a record of 29, 27, and 1. They are 14, 11, and 1 at home, and they are 7 and 3 in their last 10 games. Starting in net, and I'm a little bit surprised that Chase Perry is going to be in there tonight considering he saw 51 shots last night, stopping 47 of them. Perry has a record of 10-4-1 with one shutout, a 3.21 goals against average, and 9-13 save percentage. Starting defensive pairing, Chris Maleri, the former Grizzly, third-year pro out of Penn State. He's got four goals and 15 assists in 57 games. He'll be paired up with Colton Saucer in the beard, who's 5'9", 199 pounds. Sossman in 50 games has four goals and 27 assists. He was a plus four last night. Starting forwards, Colton Hargrove, who's got 33 goals and 35 assists in 51 games. He'll be lined up next to Justin Young, who scored his first professional goal last night. And he has one goal in 36 games this season. Hank Crone, who's the league's leading goal scorer with 39 this season. He also leads the league with 84 points. So starting forwards are Hargrove, Young, and Crone. Starting defensive pairing is Chris Mullary and Colton Sossaman. Also watch out for Jack Combs, who had two assists last night. Combs has 79 points, which is second most in the league, trailing only his teammate Hank Crone. And also watch out for Liam Finley, who scored a goal and an assist last night. Finley's got 29 goals and 35 assists this season. The majority of their scoring comes from their top four guys, Colton Hargrove, Liam Finley, Jack Combs, and Hank Crone. You'll hear a lot from those guys here tonight. And for the Grizzlies, they look to even up the series and we'll have face-off in one minute over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. And you're listening to the Grizzlies pregame report presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott.
When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club. Expectations here will always remain high and we'll continue to find a way. put together a lot of good games you know it's a great night for hockey as two big standings points are on the line tonight the grizzlies take on the allen americans i'm tyson whiting here with guy Carenza. we're in the lobby at maverick center and the grizzlies are over in allen texas which is about a 30 minute drive to the dallas metroplex downtown area a guy, what the Grizzlies got off to a little bit of a slow start last night, and for the Grizzlies, they've got a standing point in eleven of their last fourteen games. And a big key of that uh, to why has been the Grizzlies getting off to fast starts, and they're going to need to do that here tonight. Yeah, Tyson, you mentioned that, and they've done a really good job of getting that first goal, and I think it's imperative that the Grizzlies play with the lead instead of playing behind, especially a team against Allen that seems to be able to score goals at will. The Grizzlies need to come out, establish a forecheck early, and get that first goal. Certainly a big game in the standings. Utah, Allen, and Wichita are each tied for third place with 59 standings points, just one behind Kansas City, who's in second. And so for the Grizzlies, obviously it's big to win, and it really doesn't matter who wins between Kansas City and Wichita as both teams are really separated by one game anyway. But for the Grizzlies, you got to take care of business here tonight. Tomorrow's an off day, so you can empty the bucket and give your best effort. Yeah, you mentioned the, the Mountain Division standings. This game is huge in terms of playoff implications, but I think it's also big in the sense that the Grizzlies – uh, recently have lost more than they've won against the Allen Americans. This would be a great time to really solidify yourself in the playoff race and prove that you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a team like Allen. Happy St. Patrick's to everybody. Allen is wearing a green St. Patrick's uniform with white numbers, white lettering in the back. And because they're the Allen Americans who feature red, they've got a little bit of red mix. Now it looks like a Christmas theme over in Allen. The Grizzlies are wearing a white jersey with black numbers and professional green trim. Guy, you're talking about Taron Pfizer as your pick for the Optum first goal of the game. Watch out for that line with Pfizer, Tyler Penner, and Dylan Fitz. They've had some success as of late. Yeah, they've been playing really well, and you you mentioned that line. Uh, really, all three lines for the Grizzlies have been playing well as of late, and I think that's great to see, especially going down into the, the thick of things here towards the end of the season. You really want to see all three lines performing very well, so it's great to see the top line playing excellently, and that second line with Wright on it is also playing well. I mean, just guys throughout the lineup are stepping up, and it's really good to see. This broadcast is presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott, producing Premier American Copper and proudly celebrating 120 years of operations in the Utah community. Referee tonight is Austin O'Rourke. The linesman are Daniel Barnes and Aaron Schacht. The puck is dropped and we're underway. Grizzlies win the draw. They skate from left to right. And as we see it on Flow Sports, your minds, I see it on YouTube. As Seth goes over in the corner, Cam Strong gets a start as he holds up an American. Now skating over towards the corners is Sekos. Sekos throws it back to the point. Allen picks it off. Americans skate from right to left. They cross center ice, right wing. Now Hardgrove gains line, skates towards the right circle, take a lefty shot, saved by Miner. Now Hank Crone, left side, takes a shot, and it goes wide. Is he trying to go glove side on Miner? Now right point. Sossman feeds it around the wall. Left side, Grizzlies picking off as Zach Sekos. First full season as a pro at a Clarks University. Feeds it out to Aaron Tho. Tho dumps it in. Grizzlies make their first line change of the game, 50 seconds in. As the Americans in their green jerseys with a little bit of red mixed in on the shorts as Sossman feeds it to the nearest side. It looks like a Christmas theme here in the month of March. Grizzlies get it. Dakota Raby feeds it towards the high slot. Didn't get much on it. Kobe McCauley will feed it back towards Chris Malari. Malari throws it to the far side. We're a minute in. No score. Malari skates down the middle. Lefty pass. Goes past everybody. Skating's McCauley. No icing as McCauley's over to the near corner. He'll whip it around the boards to the right side. Allen fakes a shot, shot and they'll drift it around. As Connor McDonald skates towards the near corner, he avoids a check of Zachary Massacott, who loses it. Tyler Penner gets it back to the corner for McDonald. Connor will lift it high into the air. Bounces at center ice. Dakota Raby gets a right wing. Raby centers it to Penner, throws it behind his back for Wright. Wright gets over to Penner and glances off of his stick, rolls towards Massacott. Now Liam Finley throws a dangerous pass, cross crease out to Jack Combs in the near side as Allen spreads the ice. 18-15 left here in the first period, so we're just underway. So 
Grab a green beverage of your choice and maybe some chips and dip as Allen. Eric Williams, second game with Allen, former Grizzly, whips it around the boards, but everybody stops skating as the Americans are called for offside. 18.06 left in the first. Grant Abair in his green St. Patrick's-themed jersey. I think you actually bid on a few of those game-worn jerseys on the Dash Auction app if you care to. You can get one of those game-worn jerseys. Now, don't forget the Grizzlies have military night coming up next Friday. That's going to be a special jersey. You can bid on those in the Dash Auction app. As the Americans win the neutral zone draw, and Grant Abair throws it between his legs towards, towards Stefan Fournier, who lo- loses it to the left side. As now action towards the left wing as Allen drops it off for number 22, Dalton Galley. Galley will feed it behind the net. Now Roby Doe, who leads Allen in penalty minutes, gets pushed along the boards by Keaton Jamison. Jamison in the corner, battles with Roby Doe. Puck rolls from one corner to the other as Fournier to the far side, chips it back to the near corner, but Roby Doe had vacated that. And the call check clears it out to center ice. Allen gets it back as Bear skates towards his right. Now he throws a right wing pass to Roby Doe. He gets poked away by Bryson Martin. Bear skates over there. He's got good size. Now the Grizzlies gather it as they cross center ice. Jamison tries to dump it in, but he bounced it off an American and Colton Hargrove. As Allen at the Utah Blue Line skates in. Number 25, Aiden Brown will drop it off for Malari. He'll chip it to the near goal line as Allen skates around the net and they feed it to the right side. Bouncing puck goes to Sossaman. He glides it across to Malari. He glides it back to Sossaman, who's now in the high slot. He'll take a righty shot and he glances off a grizzly stick. Fitz in the area, but goes to Jamison. He'll bounce it off of Malari. Now it goes to Fitz, who's wearing number 13. He'll cross center ice. Fitz will backhand it in. Christian Simeone chases after it. Chase Perry behind his net. Throws it towards the, well, what was the far side is now the near side is Malari. We'll chip it around as they switch camera angles a couple times. Bouncy in the area as it goes to the Allen Blue line. And Aaron Tho gathers it. Tho played at Clarkson University. I think he might have played one year with the Zach Secos over at Clarkson. As the Grizzlies move it ahead looking for Taryn Pfizer as we're three and a half minutes in. Still no score. Pfizer gets it to Secos who skates down the middle. Secos crosses center ice. Now he veers off to the right as he steps over the blue line. Secos surveys. He'll bounce it off an American skate. Colton Hargrove moves it ahead. It bounced off of Secos' stick. The Americans drive it in deep in the Grizzly zone, but it looks like the flex out of play. 16-11 left in the first. Looks like pretty good action by the Grizzlies early on. Yeah, not a lot of whistles here. Just good puck moving on both sides. I think the key for the Grizzlies to win this game is they need to find a way to shut down Allen's top four. They've been dangerous all year. I think if the Grizzlies can do that, they've proven that they can score enough that they can win this game. A lot of shots last night, but only one shot here so far, and it was taken by the Allen Americans. You know that Allen wants to limit Utah's shots as Utah had 51 of them in last night's game. Grizzlies won the draw, and it's Zach Secos that won it as Terran Pfizer dumps it in. Puck goes back to Allen as Zachary Massacott throws it to the newest American, Eric Williams, who played for the Grizzlies in the 2019-2020 season. Over to Jack Combs, left wing, he crosses center ice and dumps it in as Shearer throws it to the near side, and the Grizzlies move it ahead out to center as Cam Strong gets around a skater, Strong, Tried to throw it back to Secos. It's picked off as Jack Combs, left wing, tried to dump it in and didn't. He'll move it ahead as Allen skates towards the left wing. Sharp angled shot, saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to the near side. Grizzlies try to clear it out. Mascot keeps it in left point. He'll skate towards his right shot, kick saved by Miner. As the puck goes to the far side, Jack Combs delivers a hit. Utah is the puck as Connor McDonald moves ahead to Pfizer. Pfizer gets hit from behind, but glides a pass out to center ice. Taken by Cam Strong. He skates to the right point, stops, takes the lefty shot. Saved by Perry. Rebound goes out to Massacott as Perry just handed it to him. Wasn't more of a rebound as a pass. Massacott's behind Allen's net. We're about five minutes in. Still no score. Massacott skates down the middle. He's got good size at 6'5", 220. He gains center ice and dumps it in. Miner stays in his net as Bear drifts it around. Stefan Fournier, number 44, trying to chip it ahead to Roby Doe. Pucks in the crease. Miner kicks it towards the nearest side. It's taken by the Grizzlies. As Cameron Wright gathers it, he'll skate across center ice with good speed. Wright gains the line, keeps skating as the Grizzlies run side. Wright centers it out in front. It's picked off by Perry Stick, and the Americans come back the other way. Allen at center ice, crosses center as the Americans skate in. Left circle, Fournier centering pass, shot by Bear goes wide. As Bear was cutting in front of the net. Bear feeds to the right side, shot, saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to Utah as the Grizz out to new tries. Cross center and dump it in. Cameron Wright chases after it, so is Tyler Penner. As Dalton Galley, who's 6'5", 227 pounds, collides with Penner. As the puck goes to the right point, Grizzlies get it, though, with a shot, and it's blocked by Penner out in front of the net, about 10 feet in front of Perry. Puck in the corner, Ryan Gagnon gets hit. 
Penner in the area as Grizzlies get tripped up. I think a call is going to be made as everybody stops skating. A Grizzly got tripped up, and that's the official signal. 14.02 left in the first period. And the Grizzlies are going to the power play as Ryan Gagnon goes to the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell two minutes for tripping. If you were someone you know and been charged with a DUI, Rogers and Russell is Utah's DUI defense firm. Consequences for driving under the influence in Utah are serious, and you need great attorneys on your first line. Look for a letter in the mail from Rogers and Russell inviting you to schedule a free consultation. Don't throw away or disregard this letter. Call and get Utah's number one DUI defense team, Rogers and Russell. Utah was 0 for 4 on the power play last night. They are 19% on the season. Allen's penalty kill is 82.3%. Zach Sekos will take the draw, but it goes behind James Shearer and rolls deep in the Grizzly zone as Trent Miner gets it, and he'll feed it over towards, I believe, Cameron Wright, who's behind the net. Now he gets it to Shearer. Shearer and four Grizzlies forwards are out there as he feeds it to Wright in the near side. We'll glide it back towards Sekos. Now to Pfizer on the right side. He crosses the center ice. Pfizer over to Sekos. He'll get it to Raby in the left circle. Raby throws it back to the point for Shearer. Across to Pfizer. He's now on the right side. Pfizer over to Shearer. Skates towards the right point. Now across to Sekos off the boards. Sekos to Shearer. Across to Pfizer. Now back to Sekos. He's on the left side. He winds and fires. Saved by Perry. Sekos throws it back up top for Shearer. Down low for Pfizer. I'll take a righty shot. And it goes wide. Wright might have gotten a piece of it. Wright throws it to the far side for Sekos. Sekos, 50 seconds in the power play. Grizzlies have had a couple good looks here. Sekos over to Wright. He skates down the goal line. Takes a shot saved by Perry. Allen tries to clear it out, and they do. Halfway through Utah's first power play of the game. Seven minutes in, still no score. Trent Miner gets it to Aaron Thos. Grizzlies make a line change. Though out there with Miners. Uh, Martin gets it back to Thos. Martin and throw the two defensemen. Now ahead to Cam Strong, who skates down the middle, gains the line, throws it to the right side. Now they chip it back across for Jamison. He's in the right point. He takes a pass. It's picked off by Colton Hargrove. It kicks off a Hargrove. Miner skates out and outlets it to Aaron Tho. As Miner was clear out of his crease, now Fitz skates in left side over to Strong. Back to Tho. As Tho's in the left point, he'll get it to the far corner. Now back to Tho. 23 seconds left in the power play. He'll throw it to the Far corner for Fitz, back to Tho. Tho fires a shot, saved by Perry. Rebound out in front. Jamison couldn't get a shot as he got held up by Williams, who gets the puck and clears it out. Good job by Eric Williams boxing out Keaton Jamison. Williams did a good job of that when he was with the Grizzlies three years ago. Five seconds left in the power play. As Grizzlies move it ahead. Cam Strong crosses center ice, fakes to his right, skates down the middle. Now veers off to the left. He'll take a lefty shot, saved by Perry. Gagnon's out of the penalty box. Utah 0 for 1 on the power plays. We're still scoreless eight minutes in. Now Allen skates in. Aiden Brown gets poked away by Strong and goes towards the near side. Fitz collides with number 22, Dalton Galley. The other Dalton, Dalton Skelly, is out of the lineup as Cam Strong collides with Brown. Now it goes to Bryson Martin, who gains the line left point and whips it around the boards. Grizzlies make a line change about eight and a half minutes in. Still no score. As Allen throws to the far side, Americans chip it across, still in their own end. As Grant Bear gets it, he's 6'4", 200 pounds. He'll throw it to his right. As the Americans cross center ice and drive it around the wall. Miner lets it go to the near corner. Right, McDonald gets it. He'll drift it across. Turnover, lefty shot, saved by Miner. As taken back by Colby McCauley. McCauley around the walls. It goes to Liam Finley. Now it's the left circle. Allen gets it up top for Maleri. He'll take a lefty shot, and it might have hit the post. We didn't get to see where the shot ended up, but it looked like it was a close call. Grizzlies cross center ice. Jared Power fires a shot, saved by Perry. We'll move it ahead. Now Allen skates around their net. Ryan Gagnon. We'll move it to the left side for McCauley. Back to Combs. Now Liam Finley skates down the middle. He steps over the blue line. He's in the right point. Surveys and throws it to McCauley. Now across to Malari. He skated down the middle, but he couldn't handle it. As the puck glides towards the near boards. Finley has to go off his stick. Jared Power gets held up. No call. Power across the center ice. Fires a shot. Saved by Perry. And he'll throw it out to Chris Malari. 10 minutes, 30 seconds and counting left in the first. Still no score. As Chris Malari. We'll move it ahead as it goes to center ice. Pass connects to Hank Crone. Crone skates towards the right side, stops, avoids Raby as Crone fires towards the net and saved by Miner. Rebound to the near side as Massacott moves it out to Crone. He'll ricochet it off the boards to the right point, but Allen couldn't keep it in as Eric Williams, the former Norfolk captain, will skate back towards the Allen blue line to retreat it. Now to Massacott. Back across to number 28, Justin Young, who scored his first pro goal last night in his 36th game with Allen this season. Puck is 
Kyle Pouncey gets bounced in the near corner. It goes out to Massacott left side across to Williams. I'll take a right wing shot saved by Miner. And now Dakota Raby has it. He'll move it ahead to Jamison. He'll get the bouncing puck and throw it off the far wing boards as Mascot gets taken away by Cameron Wright. Wright tries to split a double team and throws to the right corner as Kyle Pouncey over to Wright, who gets held up by Eric Williams. None of Williams' former Grizzlies teammates are still on the club, although Ryan Knass, which was an assistant at the time, as Robido gains the line and he'll throw it to the corner as he collides with Sekos. Robido tries to box out Sekos behind Utah's net. Grizzlies gather it, pass behind Cam Strong. Now lefty shot, and it goes wide. Now Allen tries to center it, rolls towards Miner, taken by Martin, as he'll whip it along the far wing boards. Allen cuts it off in the right point, but we get a whistle. 9-11 left in the first period, still no score, and we'll be back in one minute as Grizzlies 0-1 for on the power play here early on in the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. No score over an Allen. What have you seen so far? Well, Tyson, not a lot of stoppages, just good back and forth action. Grizzlies power play, I thought looked really good. They didn't score, but they were moving the puck really well. And it seems like they were trying to mimic what Allen does on their power play, just moving the puck around, trying to open good uh, shooting lanes. Uh, they did a good job of doing that, but they just couldn't get the puck in the back of the net. 9-11 left in the first period. Power play looked like, uh, even though the Grizzlies didn't score, there looked like the process was pretty good on the man advantage. Trent Miner's in net for the Grizzlies. He's going up against Chase Perry. Perry saw 51 shots last night. We'll see if the Grizzlies can test his stamina throughout the game. Draw in the Grizzlies zone is won by Allen. As the American St. Crone, who had four points last night, he leads the league in scoring, throws to the near circle. Chris Mullary, backhand shot goes wide. Nine minutes left in the first. Allen looks to start to Crone. He swings and misses. Puck goes to Utah. Taron Pfizer, right wing cross the center ice near the boards. Pfizer gains the line, gets it poked away. Now Sekos gets it. Oh, I tried to re-enter the puck, and the Grizzlies are offside as the puck exit the zone. Sekos argues his case as he thought the puck stayed in, but offside is called on the Grizzlies with 8.51 left in the first. That's certainly been an interesting start. Don't forget this is the middle game of a three-game set. Both teams will have tomorrow off. Sunday will be a 1 o'clock start in the Mountain Time Zone, 2 p.m. over in Allen. Then the Grizzlies are home for six straight games, beginning with a three-game set against the Cincinnati Cyclones next Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Don't forget that Wednesday, March 22nd, is going to be a Bud Light College night with discounted student tickets. Friday is going to be military night, and it's also an AFCU Friday where tickets start just $8, and you pay using your AFCU debit or credit card at the Maverick Center box office. And don't forget Sunday, March 26th, will be a 3-10 start. And then the Wichita Thunder will be in for a three-game set, March 29th, 31st, and April 1st. Guys, it's going to be a fun homestand, and it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, Andrew Nilsson was just traded yesterday from the Grizzlies to Cincinnati, although he's now playing in the AHL with Wilkes-Barre Scranton. However, you know, it's possible if Nilsson gets released by Wilkes-Barre Scranton that he can end up playing for Cincinnati next week. But either way, Cyclones are a dangerous team. Well, that would be quite the story, wouldn't it? And it would just serve uh, and really set the stage for a, an epic battle between the Cyclones and the Grizzlies. I'm really looking forward to it, and I think that that's going to be a really big test for the Grizzlies down the stretch and really see what they're made of. 8.51 left in the first draw. is going to be at neutral ice after the Grizzlies were called for offside. Utah's in the white jerseys with black numbers and professional green trim. Allen is wearing a green jersey with white numbers, white lettering for St. Patrick's Day, especially jersey. Allen wins the draw on their own end. Less than nine minutes left in the first as Aiden Brown loses it. Grizzly skate. Cam Strong drops off on the right point. 
Now Zach Seko skates towards the right circle, towards the near goal line. Seko's will bank it out and throw it to Connor McDonald. Take a righty shot and it goes wide. Grizzlies Cam Strong to the left, tries to center it to Seko's, and Allen cuts in front of him and takes the puck away. Goes to neutralize. Connor McDonald moves it ahead to Pfizer. Pfizer gets the puck. As he'll skate towards his left, he enters the zone and will bounce it off of Colton Sossman. The Beard throws the center ice for McDonald, who drifts it across to Sekos, who tried to dump it in, but it bounced off the linesman. Now strong over to Pfizer. He'll skate in right side. Shot. Saved by Perry. As goes over to Aaron Tho, who skates towards the corner. Tho gets hit by Aiden Brown. Brown loses his stick. Tho loses the puck as it goes back to the far corner. Brown gets the stick back as Sossman throws it ahead to Maleri. Right wing pass off the boards for Hargrove. As Hargrove skates, he's being shadowed by Jacob Semek, who's wearing number 40. Semek battles in the near corner. Hargrove keeps the puck. Now it's taken away by Utah. Jamison moves ahead to McCallchuk. Left wing pass to Fitz. He gains the line, stops the left point, throws it across the throw. Skate in, lefty shot. Saved by Perry. He holds on with 7.35 left in the first, but good passing by the Grizzlies. Fitz was in the left point, threw it across to Aaron Tho. Tho was all alone, skated to the right circle and had a good shot, but Perry made the save. Grizzlies are moving the puck really well, Tyson. I like what I've seen. Their transition game is really strong in this one. And I'm kind of surprised with the lack of physicality that we've seen in this game. It seems like both teams are more focused on moving the puck and speed. Yeah, it seems like more of a finesse game for two teams that are in the top three in penalty minutes. We've seen a lot of penalty minutes between these clubs in particular against each other. Jamison wins the offensive zone draw, but it goes past the Grizzlies defensive unit and on to Trent Minor. We'll bounce it off the end boards deep in the Grizzlies zone. As Jared Power moves ahead, Dylan Fitz across off the wall for McCallchuck, who gets it. McCallchuck's played good hockey as of late. He's in the corner. He gets it poked away by Massacon as it rolls towards the left side. Grizzlies throw it back, but Allen picks it off. Three on two. Jack Combs skates towards the left circle. Thomes tried to center it, and it's picked off by Aaron Tho. Good defensive play by Tho. He's a plus 14 in his last 14 games. Ed to McCallchuck, who dumps it in. Tho and McCallchuck were teammates in Wheeling two years ago. Eric Williams over to Jack Combs. Combs, a longtime pro, over to Massacon, who gets hit by McCallchuck as it rolls over towards Combs. He'll feed it across as Allen crosses center ice. They try to get it back to Combs. Utah picks it off. Penner out to center ice, but it's retaken by Liam Finley of Allen. We'll throw it back to Chris Maleri. 6.38 and counting left in the first no score as Allen gets it ahead to McCauley. Gets it poked away at new tries. Grizzlies move it to their right for Penner. Penner glides it back as Cameron right along the boards gets hit. Right keeps the puck, skates towards the right goal line. I try to feather it out in front, and it goes wide. Now left point as it goes over towards Cameron right. He'll take a righty shot that goes wide. Now Bryce Martin puck bounces in the crease. Allen clears it back towards the corner. Now Raby gathers it. Now I tried to move it ahead to right, but he couldn't h- hang on. Right throws to the left point. Lefty shot. Saved by Perry. Now Dakota Raby backhand shot. Saved by Perry again. And this time he holds on. 6.04 left in the first. As the Grizzlies down, Tyler Penner. Penner, the Grizzlies Iron Man, is on two knees. Looks like Cameron Wright wanted to confront Colby McCauley. McCauley, a pretty physical player at times. Now, Raby and McCauley having some words. Penner, as he get back to his feet, as Wright and Raby having some words, as Penner must have gotten hit out in front of the net. Um, I did see Colin Lee's wife, who works for in the Grizzlies' office. Don't want to see Colin very often, the Grizzlies' trainer. Luckily, it looks like Tyler Penner's back to his feet. Grizzlies will have an offensive zone drop. I really like the attack from Utah's offense here so far. I agree, Tyson. I think that the attack is looking really strong right now. Good puck movement. The Grizzlies are taking really smart shots. Uh, those rebounds out in front, they're getting to those as well. They're moving the puck well in the, uh, in the Allen zone. I like what I've seen so far from the Grizzlies. Draw taken in the right circle. Looks like the Grizzlies have changed up their forward lines a little bit. Zach Sekos to take the draw against Colton Hargrove. This time the faceoff is won by Allen. Americans in their own zone. The puck has been in the Allen zone quite a bit in the first 14 minutes of play. Over to Hargrove, he gains the line, skates towards the right side. Now Hank Crone whips it from one corner to the other. Near side, Grizzlies get hit, and they'll move it ahead. Terran finds across the center ice. He'll drop it back to the right side for Strong. As Strong dumps it in, chasing after it's Pfizer who gets physical. Now Pfizer gets blasted in the corner. Sekos in the area, skates towards the far corner. Allen, do they clear it out? Looks like they do as it goes deep in the Grizzlies zone. As Jacob Semek chases after it, looks like Allen's call for icing. Boy, Pfizer got hit pretty hard on the right side. We couldn't see who that was. But uh, Pfizer's starting to play more of a physical game as this uh, season has progressed. I really like what I've seen from Jacob Semek in the few sh- shifts I've seen from him, him here in the first period, the defenseman who's making his second pro appearance out of Arizona State. 
Draws going to be in the far side. Like I say, guy, it seems like the action has been in the Allen zone the majority of the first period. It seems like that's been the case, and that's really what you want to see from the Grizzlies is really push that narrative on offense because Allen, high-scoring team, if they're not in the Grizzlies zone, they can't score. Still no score. Five and a half minutes in. Allen wins the faceoff. They skate from right to left in the first period as it rolls towards the near boards. They drive it around. Semic gets, that looks like there was a collision behind Utah's net. We get a penalty. A Grizzly is down, and so is an American. As there was a collision, and the referee raised the arm. Unfortunately, the angle we gets a wide one, so we couldn't tell specifics. It looks like Allen's going to be on the power play for the first time tonight with 519 left in the first. A big collision there. A Grizzly was down for a little bit, then they got back to his feet, and then look, luckily it looks like Allen back to their feet as well. The Americans will be on the power play for the first time when we come back in 37 seconds as there's no score. Aaron Thos and the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. You're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Five nineteens left in the first period. Aaron Tho is in the Rogers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. Two minutes for boarding. Time of penalty, 1441. Guy, the Grizzlies really have played well in this first period, but they need to kill this penalty off. Yeah, Tyson, they have. This is a critical moment in the game. The game is tied right now, and I think the Grizzlies have done a great job of playing a tight defensive game against Allen, even though play has been back and forth, but they really have to kill this penalty. Could be a big momentum changer. Draws in the near circle. Colton Hargrove takes against Jamison. Jamison wins the faceoff as it goes to McDonald. Down to the far corner, and the Grizzlies clear it out. Those in the box, two minutes for boarding as Chris Malari gets the puck. Malari skates around his goaltender, Chase Perry. Malari played previously with Utah and Kansas City. He'll throw it to the left side for Combs. Now across to Finley. Finley's got great speed. Throws it across the left side for Combs, who chips it back up top for Malari. Left point, Malari throws it to the near corner as Allen. Skates over there. Hank Crone being challenged by McDonald. He'll feed it back up top for Malari. Now across to Hargrove, who's got the C on his chest. As Hargrove on the right side up top for Malari. Less than five minutes left in the first period. Malari fires towards the net. Oh, he goes off the boards. Looked like he was looking for a redirection for Jack Combs as the puck flies into the Allen zone. Grizzlies do a good job clearing it out. 108 and counting left in Allen's power play. Malari throws to the left side as Allen's Jack Combs will drop it off as Hank Crone crosses center ice, skates down the middle, gets around Tyler Penner. Now Combs left side shot, saved by Miner. Trent holds on, 57 seconds left in the power play. Allen does a great job of spreading the ice and utilizing their great playmakers and their speed, and they're able to get a good look for, with Combs over there on the left side. Yeah, that was a good look there for Allen, but really I'm fine with the Grizzlies letting that look go. Uh, I think they've done a good job of keeping things to the perimeter and not really at letting Allen get the chances that they want to get. And that was a pretty simple save for Trent Miner. Well, they show Hargrove taking a big hit on Terran Pfizer over in the corner a few minutes ago. That was a big hit. Luckily, Pfizer was able to get back up. Penner takes the draw against A. Barrett, and Utah wins the faceoff for the second time in the penalty kill. Bryce and Martin clears it out. Chase Perry to the far side of his net gets it. He'll skate behind his net. And he'll drift it over to the far side. As the Americans look like they've made a line change, so do the Grizzlies. Sossaman has the puck. He's out there along with Grant Abair, who cuts to his left as Sossaman skates down the middle, still in his own zone. Left wing pass to center ice to Abair connects. Abair gains the line on side, drops it back off for Sossaman as he's in the left point. He'll feed it across. Now back to Abair, chips to the near goal line as Fournier tried to throw it across, and Semic cuts it off. Fournier still with the puck, throws to the left point as Eric Williams throws it across. Looking for the beard up top. They get it to him. He fakes a shot and throws to the right side. Allen gets it back to Sossaman. The former Idaho Steelhead skates the right point. Now across to, I believe, Eric Williams. Over to Sossaman. He'll take a righty shot, and it's blocked. Rolls back to the left point. Two seconds left in the power play. And Aaron throws out of the box, and it's a Utah disaster. Cleanup successful penalty kill as Allen behind the net. As Fournier looking for a wraparound pass out in front. It's in the crease. Allen hacking away. And the Grizzlies throw it off the end boards. Bryce and Martin gets tripped up by Grant Abair. Is it called? No, it's not. Oh, maybe it is. They stopped playing. 
As long as it looked like Bryce Martin got tripped up right there behind Utah's net, and the call is going to be made. So Utah goes back on the power play with 3-0-1 left in the first period. We saw that clearly, and we're hoping that the officials saw the same thing we saw. And it looks like Grant Abair, number 77, gets penalty minutes 11 and 12 this season. Oh, how the tables have turned. Big penalty kill for the Grizzlies, and now they go on the power play. Excellent chance to take that momentum from the penalty kill and convert it on the power play, which was looking good the first time we saw him in this game. We saw a lot of scoring last night with Allen winning 7-4. to four. Looks like we got a defensive battle here in the first period. No score. Grizzlies are on the power play for the second time. As Sekos to take the draw against Mikel Robido. As a draw, won by the Grizzlies. As James Shearer in the far side skates towards a corner, gets it around. As there's no score late in the first period, Dakota Raby on the right side will drop it back to the point for Pfizer. Back to Raby's in the corner. He'll feed it up top for Sekos, who glides it to the left side for Sekos. Sekos will take a shot in his block as it rolls towards Pfizer, but a puck goes out to center ice, and Pfizer gets it back. He'll throw it to James Shearer, who moves it ahead. Grizzlies still in their own zone as Sekos gets it back to Shearer. 1.30 left in Utah's power play. Two and a half minutes left in the first period. Still no score. As Taron finds a right side, crosses center ice, gains the line, gets poked away, and Allen will clear it out. As Trent Miner to the near side of his net gets the puck, and I'll get it back to James Shearer. As we got 1.13 left in Utah's power play, Shearer throws to his left. Grizzlies cross center. Raby throws it back into the Grizzlies zone for Sekos. Now to Pfizer, back to Sekos near the bench area. Over to Raby, who couldn't handle the pass. Eric Williams will move it back into the Grizzlies zone. James, James Schur over to Cameron Wright, who gets tripped up by Jack Combs. Oh, the call is going to be made. Yeah, Combs doesn't like it, but he tripped up Cameron Wright. So we'll get a five on three for 56 seconds. Combs can't believe it, but the call was made, and it had to be made. Good call by the referee, Austin O'Rourke. And on St. Patrick's Day, Jack Combs argues his case, but he goes to the Rodgers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. I think the only thing you can argue there is that Cameron Wright dove on the play. But other than that, you know, big opportunity. Five on three here for 56 seconds. I think it was a good call, Tyson. I think that's one of those calls that just you see it and he goes down and it's, it's a trip to me. And I think the Grizzlies, this is an excellent chance to get that power play rolling. Five on three. We mentioned the Grizzlies playing with the lead. Great chance to get the first goal of the game. Grizzlies are 19 and five when scoring first, and they play with the lead quite a bit here over the last month or so from about the middle of February to the middle of March. And we'll see if the Grizzlies can find one here late in the first period. We're skating five on three for 56 seconds. Draw is going to be in the Allen zone. Zach Sekos will take the draw against Colton Hargrove as a faceoff won by Allen as it's over in the far corner. Now Maleri. Oh, arm is raised. It's going to be a penalty on the Grizzlies. Now, Pfizer touches up. I think that referee was looking for anything to call a penalty on Utah. It's so funny. Dakota Raby looks like he's the one skating towards the penalty box. And it looks like Raby's going to walk into the Rodgers and Russell Legal Solutions holding cell. So, so much for the five on three. We're going to skate four on three for 47 seconds. And then we'll have to do some complicated math to figure out, you know, things from there. Sadly, I think that that was kind of predetermined that Raby was going to get a penalty there. Yeah, Tyson, it's unfortunate. And you got to think that the referees would like to have equal change in both pockets. And it's one of those calls where you, you got to figure that the next one was probably going the Grizzlies way. But four on four action act, uh, will, will come at some point. Uh, but for the Grizzlies, you go back to having the man advantage, see what they can do. Four on three power play for the Grizzlies for 43 seconds. Cameron Wright crosses center ice. He's surrounded by three Americans. Wright goes down, rolls it along the wall as Allen behind the net. Well, bouncing off uh, an American. Now another American gets it and clears it out. Allen wearing green tonight with a little bit of red mixed in. Kind of looks like a Christmas tree. Although I don't think Christmas trees have red in it. Grizzlies cross center. Seco's gains the line. And looks like he's onside. Sure gets it. Grizzlies patient with our approach. 17 seconds left in the four on three. Pfizer over to Shearer, fakes a shot back to Pfizer, takes a shot and it goes wide. As Set goes to the right side, he'll skate towards the point. As Set goes to the right side, will drift over to his left. He'll get to Pfizer, now across to Shearer, one-timer, and it's blocked by Maleri. Now Shearer gets it back. Now we're skating four on four. Shearer will throw it back, fresh out of the box. Hebert gets to the right circle. Hebert skates in, he, oh, he blows the tire as he was trying to get around. Zach Sekos, now right side, lefty shot goes wide. And the puck glides off the near boards all the way into the Allen zone. 
We're skating four on four for the next uh, for the rest of this period, it looks like. As Allen throws it to center ice, Hank Crone crosses center. Crone will skate down the middle. He gets it poked away. Good job by the Grizzlies as Utah tries to move it ahead towards the near side. Goes back over to Bear, who feeds it to the right circle. Shot save. Rebound shot. And that one goes wide. Minor might have gotten a stick on it. Great stop by Trent. As Ryan Gagnon over to the left side. Throws it behind his back for Finley. Finley fires towards the net, and it gets kicked away by Aaron Tho. As Cameron right along the near side will skin out to neutral ice. He gets back checked by Finley as Wright gets spun around, and Allen takes a puck as Dalton Galley will skate back in his own end. He'll drop it off for Crone, who crosses center ice. Two seconds left in the period. Crone with a shot. Pad saved by Miner. The horn sounds, and that will do it for 20 minutes over at Credit Union of Texas Events Center. There's three seconds left in Jack Combs' penalty, and 13 seconds left in Dakota Rabies. Penalty as Chad Costello, the Allen coach, walks off the ice. Great defensive effort by both clubs here in the first period. Two teams are known for offense. The Grizzlies have been good offensively over the last month, and Allen about as prolific an offense as we see in the league, but it's dominated by defense and goaltending. Good penalty kill work on both clubs, and we have no score as both teams are skating off the ice. When we come back, Guy Krenz will recap the first 20 minutes, and we will also talk some hockey and go over some scores from around the world of sports. No score over in Allen. First intermission on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are gonna help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Welcome back to the Grizzlies Hockey Network. It's the first intermission report presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott, and we're scoreless in Allen. Tyson and I are hanging here at the Maverick Center lobby. Keeping company is with us is the two Turner Cups. And the Grizzlies looking to make a playoff push here and get old Kelly in between those two. Yeah. And it starts with having a good series here against Allen. And the Grizzlies, I thought, played really well in the first period. No scoring. Uh, but the Grizzlies were sharp. They were moving the puck down from end to end. Good back and forth action. But it feel, felt like that the majority of the play uh, well, offensively was in the Allen zone. Uh, but Allen did have their cracks at the Grizzlies net. But Trent Minor was tall stopping all 11 shots that he saw shots are 10 to 11 in favor of Allen. So again, pretty evenly played uh, the power play is 0 for three for the Grizzlies. Allen is 0 for two where you're currently in the middle of a four on four situation, three seconds left on the Allen penalty, 13 seconds left on the Grizzlies penalty. Uh, so we are in the middle of that. Um, we've seen, few penalties on both sides but overall again just really even played game but I, I really liked the Grizzlies chances offensively uh, more than what I've seen from Allen uh, on the Grizzlies sides of things it looks like 
Jared Power has taken two shots, as has Aaron Tho. So those two lead the Grizzlies in shots. Trent Minor, as I mentioned before, has stopped everything that Allen has thrown at him. And that's really the case so far is we saw a lot of goals from Allen last night. Now they're held scoreless. So I really feel like the Grizzlies have the Allen Americans right where they want them. A low-scoring affair benefits the Grizzlies. Yeah, I thought the Grizzlies played pretty well in that first period. It looked like, as you mentioned, the puck was in the Allen zone more than it was in the Grizzlies zone. And, um, you know, I think that, you know, Grant Bear for Allen had a pretty good first period, but Aaron Tho continues to shine. A plus 14 in his last 14 games. He had two shots. One of them was a really good look in the right circle. Uh, looks like the Grizzlies really passing the puck crisply. Um, they're able to spread the ice. And I think that, you know, even though they, they didn't get a goal in that first period, you know, you have to like the process of things. I think even though the Grizzlies didn't get a power play goal there, I think you have to like the process that the power play is going through. And it looks like they're getting adjusted to life after Andrew Nilsson. They're really working the puck around. We saw a lot of Sekos and Pfizer. And I think James Shear, once he gets some more power play experience here at, with the Grizzlies, I think he'll end up being a good quarterback on the Grizzlies power play the rest of the regular season. You know, he's not as big as Andrew Nelson, but sure does have that ability to pass the puck. And I think he's got an underrated shot, something that we'd like to see maybe a little bit more. So I think the James sure one of those guys, he's done a pretty good job you know, for the Grizzlies in terms of orchestrating things, certainly a lot more organized than what we saw last night on the power play. Yeah, Tyson, I agree. And I really think if you're looking for that new quarterback on the power play, you're right. James Shearer would probably be my first to, choice to be that guy on the back end kind of moving the puck around distributing and taking a shot from time to time you mentioned he's got a really nice shot oh, I wish he would use it more and when he has he seemed to be able to score I also think that Bryson Martin could really fit well on the second power play unit and I think a dark horse to really uh, slide in there is Aaron though he's looked really well uh, really good over his last few games that he's played and he's taking uh, he's leads the Grizzlies in shots in this game he's tied with power with two so he's uh, known she's shown us that he can shoot the puck from time to time but I really like the movement on that power play. And it seems like the Grizzlies are trying to slow the game down, simplify things. They're trying to mimic what Allen does on the power play, where they move the puck around the perimeter, looking for a good shot out in front, get, trying to get the goalie moving, screen, screen him a little bit. Uh, I like what I've seen from the Grizzlies on the power play. They're 0 for 3, but I think that they're starting to get things rolling here. Yeah, it's anybody's hockey game. You know, you mentioned kind of an evenly played statistic first period, but, you know, for the Grizzlies, it just... You like the way they, they move the puck around offensively, and I think both teams have to like the way their de defensive effort was. I think Allen has to like the fact that you know Utah only had 10 shots in the first period, as after all, Utah lit him up for 51 shots. And it seems like hearing from Chad Costello and reading the Allen Americans blog, Allen was not happy with their defensive effort, despite the win. I mean, they're happy they won the game, but they weren't happy with how many shots they allowed Utah, and really in particular, how many good shots it seemed like Utah had in that third period. Yeah, it's pretty unusual for us to see the Grizzlies take that many shots, but we saw them do it in Wichita with over 100 shots combined in those two games, and it really seems like the Grizzlies have turned a corner uh, with the shot taking. It seems like now they're taking more shots and they're out shooting their opponents more often than they do uh, than they did in the first half of the season, and I think the Grizzlies, because of that, are getting more five-on-five -five scoring. So uh, I think if you're the Grizzlies coaching staff, you have to like what you're seeing. I also really like the Grizzlies' transition game in this one. I think that their zone entries have been perfect so far in this game. That's why we're seeing them establish an offensive presence in the Allen zone. As for Allen's zone entries, it seems like the Grizzlies are doing a good job of standing them up the blue line, which is why we're seeing the Allen Americans get into the Grizzlies' zone, but they're dumping the puck. They're not really getting sustained offensive pressure. So the puck is going end-to-end, -end, but the Grizzlies are having more success in the Allen zone. We'll see who scores the Optum. First goal of the game for Utah. Optum is committed to making healthcare work better, leading the way to better experiences, better health, and lower costs for you. I think I have Cameron Wright and you have Taryn Pfizer. I think uh, Noah, who we saw recently, he's got James Sure as his pick for the Optum first goal of the game. Noah was going to walk right along here, but he decided to take the back road uh, and head out for the night. But, uh, you know, for the Grizzlies, I think it was interesting. I'm really kicking myself for not taking note of the stat as the Grizzlies – well, they've taken a ton of shots as of late. In fact, the Grizzlies are averaging about 38 or 39 shots per game over the last month from about the Orlando series. Uh, they're the third weekend of February here till like the third weekend of March. You know, the Grizzlies have just taken a ton of shots here lately. They're still near the bottom of the league in shots per game, but the Grizzlies are averaging about 38 shots over the last month. That's pretty crazy to think about considering before the Orlando series, the Grizzlies were averaging about 29 to 30 shots per game. So you think about that extra average of eight shots a game. That, that is incredible. And you've really seen the Grizzlies 
an uptick in scoring since the Orlando series. It seems like the offense is really starting to click. Every All the guys are really starting to gel. That's exactly what you want to see come playoff time. When we come back to the Grizzlies intermission report, we'll go over some scores in college basketball. There's a potential crazy upset in the making with less than two minutes left in regulation. And we'll go, also go over some NHL and ECHL scores as well. No score over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. And we're back, we're back in two minutes on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Welcome back to the Grizzlies Hockey Network. I'm Tyson Whiting. Let's go over some ECHL scores. First intermission, Kansas City leads Wichita 1-0. Kansas City is in second place with 60 standings points, and Wichita's got 59 points, which is tied with Allen and Utah for third place in the division. Other games in the involving Mountain Division opponents, Tulsa and Rapid City will meet in about 10 minutes from now over at the Monument. Tulsa's in last place, and Rapid City's in sixth. At 7 o'clock, Orlando is at Idaho, so a rare trip for the Orlando Solar Bears over to Boise, Idaho's got a record of 46-9-1-2. and two. If they were a basketball team, they'd be a one seed in the NCAA tournament. And speaking of one seeds, could Purdue choke this one away? I remember in 1996, Purdue was a one seed, and they almost lost to a 16 seed. Right now, there's a minute left in regulation. Fairly Dickinson, I have no clue where that is. Fairly Dickinson leads Purdue 61-56. That game with a minute three left in regulation. Of course, the biggest and best game in the first round has to be at the same time as the Grizzlies game. But, wow, Fairleigh Dickinson's up by five. They're a 16 seed against the, the number one seed, Purdue. Seven minutes left in regulation in the East region. Six seed Kentucky leads Providence 46-38. In the West region, third seed Gonzaga leads Grand Canyon University 52-42. to In the Midwest region at halftime, Drake leads Miami 30-25. to Drake's a 12 seed. Miami is a five. Guy, do you know where Fairleigh Dickinson University is? You know, Tyson, I can't say that I do. Pretty crazy game, though. Uh, you know, I think that would bust my bracket. My bracket, my bracket's already busted. But, I mean, that would really, I think, destroy almost everybody's bracket, I would assume. Fairleigh Dickinson is located in Hackensack, New Jersey. So that's where Fairleigh Dickinson is. In fact, the only other 16 seed to defeat a one was UMBC defeating Virginia Back in, I believe, 2018, uh, I remember the Grizzlies played a game. Luckily, I was able to listen to the second half driving home as I was doing the studio of a Grizzlies game, doing the pre- and post-game show with the Adrian Denny doing the play-by-play. I was able to listen to that. 
And in fact, the UMBC head coach, Ryan Oldham, is now the head coach at Utah State University. We'll see. So we'll see if Fairly Dickinson, the 16 seed, can defeat the one seeded Purdue Boilermakers. As I mentioned, Purdue was a one seed and almost lost to a 16 seed back in 1996. Right now, there's 55 seconds left in the second half. Fairly Dickinson leads Purdue 61 to 56. Other scores in the ECHL, one game has gone final. Adirondack defeated Newfoundland 6-2. 17 minutes left in the third. Toledo leads Indy 2-1. After two periods, Savannah leads Jacksonville 3-2. Early third period, Kalamazoo leads Fort Wayne 3-1. Reading is opening up a can on Atlanta 8-1 with 15 minutes left in the third period. So the broadcasters there have to go over some blowout material. Second intermission, Florida and 12 Riviera are tied at 4 Early third period, Greenville leads South Carolina 3-1. to one. Early third period, Norfolk and Jeff Carr leads Wheeling 3-2. to two. And after two periods, Worcester and Maine are tied at two. Cincinnati, who's going to be here at Maverick Center for a three-game set next week, they lead Iowa 1-0. Over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center, there's no score between the Grizzlies and the Americans. Now there's 28 seconds left. Fairleigh Dickinson leads 61-58. to 58. So Purdue scored a bucket. 28 seconds left. The 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson looking to pull off a monumental upset. One, uh, three games in the NHL in progress right now. Early third period, Philadelphia leads Buffalo 4 0. Also, early third period, Toronto leads Carolina 4 2. And just starting out the third period, St. Louis leads Washington 4 0. And at 8 o'clock, Columbus takes on the Anaheim Ducks. When we come back, we'll see if we can give you an update on that Fairleigh Dickinson score. Oh, yeah, and we'll have second period action over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center as there's no score. And for the Grizzlies, we'll see if they can find a way to get that first goal and get the optim first goal of the game. Everybody make your pick if you still can on the live chat and find out who the optim first goal of the game is going to be. We'll be back and. Have second period action in two minutes on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are gonna help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Now Both teams are now on the ice to start the second period. For the Grizzlies, we'll see if they can get that first goal. The first goal is certainly critical for Utah as they are 19-5 and when leading after one, and when you consider... How good both teams offensively played last night. It's kind of interesting to see that we got a defensive battle here through one period. It is quite strange. And when you think of the Allen Americans, you think of a high-powered offense. You think of their fantabulous four or whatever their nickname is for those guys over there. <laughs> the for sure uh, game. Yeah, something like that. I can never <laughs> get it right. But uh, you, you think about an offense that scores a ton of goals, and we saw that last night. But here today, the Grizzlies have done an excellent job of neutralizing those threats. And as a result of that, we got no score. 
Allen in the green jerseys celebrating St. Patrick's Day. That's really the only reason why Guy and I are wearing green here. I I got a little bit of a brighter sh shade of green. You've got like a professional looking type of green. The Grizzlies will be shorthanded. Well, let's see. Combs will come out of the box in three seconds for Allen, and Dakota Raby will be out of the box in 13 seconds. And so then we'll be back to skating five on five. Uh, Grizzlies had a couple power play opportunities. They didn't score, but the Grizzlies process on the power play looked better. As 20 minutes are on the stadium scoreboard clock, a partial sellouts over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. As looks like a lot of Allen American fans are in attendance. It looks like a good crowd. And Allen has won the draw. We're underway in the second period. Out of the box is Allen's Jack Combs. Now Dakota Rabies out of the box. It's a successful Utah disaster cleanup penalty kill. As Allen feeds out in front to Finley, it goes past him out to the high slot. And it looks like we get a whistle. Puck must have exited the zone. And offside are the Americans. 20 seconds into the second period. Draws going to come out to new tries. Grizzlies led by second-year head coach Ryan Kanaswich, who's the all-time leading scorer in Grizzlies history. And if you're making a case for the greatest player in Allen Americans history, you'd say Chad Costello was part of four championship teams for the Americans. Zach Sekos will take the draw. He's got Terran Pfizer to his right and Cam Strong to his left. Sekos talking it over at the linesman. Colton Hargrove takes a faceoff for Allen. Draw one by the Grizzlies. James Scherr throws it across to the captain, Connor McDonald, the Bowling Green product. He'll move it ahead to Cam Strong. Strong gets it down the middle. Take a lefty shot. Saved by Perry. Strong goes down to the left corner. Looks like Strong's hurt as Allen will cross center ice. Right wing pass. They dump it in. Connor McDonald chases after it. Terran Pfizer in the area. And now McDonald goes down. Let's see on the other side. Hopefully the camera angle will pull back to the Grizzly that was down on the near side, and that was Cam Strong. All Strong is on two knees, and he's gliding towards the Grizzlies bench. Can uh, Colin Lee, the Grizzlies trainer, looking after him. Well, unfortunately, it looks like Cam Strong is hurt. As uh, looks like he's having to be helped off the ice. He's going to the bench, though. The bench is not attached to the locker room. Strong glided from one corner to the other, and it looked like he did all that on two knees. That's unfortunate. Hopefully, Cam Strong will be okay. He's played great hockey for the Grizzlies as of late. Yeah, a tough loss here for the Grizzlies, Tyson. Hopefully, he'll be able to come back into this game. You mentioned him going to the bench and not the tunnel, so that's a good sign. But Cam Strong drives the net so well, and uh, he was just trying to drive the net there and unfortunately took a hard spill into the board. So uh, hopefully, he'll be, all, he'll be all right. 19 minutes, 20 seconds left in the second half or the second period. We're thinking about the second half and seeing if Fairleigh Dickinson can pull off a monumental upset. Now we're still looking for the game's first goal. No score 40 seconds in is Cam Strong. Uh, unfortunately, we're seeing a logo, so we can't tell you if Strong's still on the bench and getting looked at or anything like that. But uh, the Grizzlies will have an offensive zone dry, I believe. Uh, it, well, it's going to be in the Allen zone. As uh, taking the face off will be... Zachary Mad will be Kobe McCauley, mascot's defenseman, as Allen to the right side takes a shot and it's blocked. Grizzly skate from right to left as we see it on Flow Sports. As Dakota Raby skates towards the left corner, looks to center. The only guy home is an American. Allen will two with two passes. They throw it out of the zone. Now right wing. Kobe McCauley wearing number 29 just outside the right circle takes a shot and is blocked by Semek, the newest member of the Grizzlies. Jacob Semek wearing number 40. As the puck goes back to Raby, he'll move it ahead to Tyler Pouncey, who gains center ice, and he'll fire a shot saved by Perry. As the Americans throw it out to center ice, ricochets off Cameron Wright, rolls towards Jack Combs. Now McCauley drops it off for the high slot for Finley. He'll take a righty shot that's blocked. Martin was in the area. As the puck goes to the right side, as Allen whips it around the boards, goes back over to Massacott. They'll feed it to the near goal line. Now Allen skates around the net. They try to chip it out in front. High slot, Finley fakes a shot. Now he gets poked away. Grizzlies moving out to center as the puck lifts in the air. Raby gets tripped up at center ice, touched up by Massacott. That's going to be a penalty on the Americans. Grizzlies are going on the power play. Two minutes for tripping as Allen's in the Rodgers and Russell legal solutions holding cell. It's a golden opportunity for the Grizzlies to take a lead here. Neither team scored a power play goal. Looks like some arguing being done by members of both teams. Cameron Wright doing a little bit of talking as Allen goes to the penalty box. 18 minutes. 20 seconds left in the second period. 12 seconds left over in the East region. Fairly Dickinson leads Purdue 61 to 58. Fairly Dickinson, a 16 seed, trying to beat a one. As Allen goes to the box, and the trip ended up around the center ice logo. Finley tripped up Dakota Raby. So the draw is going to be over in the near circle. Raby's in the left wing up front. 
Seckos to take the face off. Cameron Wright is over on the right wing. Almost looked like Jacob Semick was over up top on the left side. As linesman having some words with Cameron Wright. Wright trying to mix things up. Seckos will take the draw. I think Taryn Pfizer is going to be out there as well for the Grizzlies. Mikael Robido takes a face off for Allen. Allen wins the draw, and they'll clear it out. Trent Miner will give it over to Jacob Semick, who's on this power play unit. Taryn Pfizer out there as well. That'd normally be a spot where we'd see James Shearer. As Jacob Semick will throw it back to the far side. Taryn Pfizer will skate across center ice and go throw it over to Seko. Seko skates towards his right. He enters the zone on side as he drifts over to the right circle. Gets it back to Cameron Wright, who skates towards the right circle, back to Sekos, who's behind the Allen net. Now to the right side, up top for Semek, who fakes a shot, throws it to the left side, Pfizer, one-timer, and he scores! Taron Pfizer is the optimum first goal of the game as he gets his 23rd of the year, and the Grizzlies get on the board. It's a power play tally, and it's Taron Pfizer with a rocket from the right circle on a one-timer, and Utah's drawn first blood. The Grizzlies are 19-5 and five when they score first, and the Grizzlies are hoping... That will turn into victory here tonight. Jacob Semek might have gotten an assist, which would be his first pro point as he was out there on the ice distributing things. But Taron Pfizer found himself all alone, a guy that's certainly big to get that first goal. It is, Tyson, and it started with excellent puck movement. You mentioned Semek moving the puck really well over to Taron Pfizer. And, hey, that was the guy I had for optimum first goal of the game. You ride the hot hand, and Taron pfizer has been hot, and he gets the first one. I knew I should have taken Taron Pfizer. 17.44 left in the second. And it looks like Fairleigh Dickinson's beaten Purdue as 16 has beaten a 1. Grizzlies up 1-0 as Allen crosses center ice, fires it on to Miner, gets it on one hop, he holds on, and some pushing and shoving after the whistle, and the Cameron Wright going after an American. And Colton Hargrove over there as well as Cameron Wright has lost his helmet, and it looks like Cameron Wright's going to get a penalty. As after the whistle, it looks like Cameron Wright and maybe Aiden Brown got in a confrontation out there in front of Trent Miner. That rolled, spilled over to the far corner. Aiden Brown looks like he's upset. Brown might be going to the box as well. 17.33 left in the second. As we didn't see a whole lot of physical play, it was pretty finesse there in the first period, and it looks like uh, play starting to get physical here in the second. As Aiden Brown will skate to the penalty box for Allen, and Cameron Wright will skate to the box for Utah. Wright having some words with Aiden Brown. We'll see if we'll skate five on five or four on four. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we do go four on four. The Grizzlies did score a four on four goal in last night's game, and it was Taryn Pfizer. And uh, Becky Holso on Utah says he's tearing it up, and that's exactly true. He's been on a tear as of lately. It was the one that came up with Grizzmania. I kind of like that one. Uh, I think that was me. I like. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so two minutes each for Aiden Brown and Cameron Wright. Draw's probably going to be in the Grizzlies zone. That's where the last whistle was. His fans having a good time over in Allen. And if you have Purdue going far in your NCAA tournament bracket, well, you might as well just take your bracket and do this. Fairly Dickinson defeated them, the only the second 16 seed to defeat a one. Looks like we're skating four on four. Puck deep in the Allen zone as we're back to live action. Utah leads 1-0 on Taron Pfizer's team leading 23rd of the year. As Allen skates around Utah's net over to the right side of the screen, Colton Hargrove gets it right circle, being back-checked by McDonald. Arm is raised by the referee. Oh, I think they're going to call Connor McDonald as uh, two minutes for hooking. It looks like the signal from the referee is Colton Hargrove looked like he got around McDonald, was skating towards the net, and McDonald hooked him. So it looks like we're going to get a four-on-three power play but like for a minute, the officials were letting him play a little bit. Now he looks like he's tightened it up a little bit. Now Connor McDonald will join Cameron Wright in the penalty box. Yeah, interesting sequence of events here. Now we're starting to see a little penalty trouble on both sides of the uh, of the puck here. I almost wonder if this sets a precedent for the rest of the game, if the referee is just going to call everything that he sees. Uh, we'll see how if that will be the case going forward. Both teams will need to adjust as Allen wins the faceoff. They're now on a four-on-three power play. Liam Finley throws to Hargrove. Now back to Finley, who's in the high slot. He'll drift it over to the left point as Crone over to Hargrove. One-timer saved by Miner. Rebound goes out to Utah. The Grizz clear it out. As it goes deep into the Allen zone, Hank Crone skates around his net. Make that Liam Finley. You can tell him with his speed. Finley at neutral ice in a hurry. Now he's into the offensive zone. 
Finley can play so fast and yet play so under control at the same time. Hargrove to the right point, throws it across. And, well, we went a while before we had a frozen screen, but it looks like we got a frozen screen here. 16.40 left in the second as four-on-three power play. And we'll see if we can unfreeze the screen. Hargrove is frozen in time. As he's over there. Looks like it's still one nothing. 16-16 left in the second. As Puck goes back to center ice, Liam Finley gets it. We were looking so good for a while there on the screen there. As Combs drops it off, now it goes to Liam Finley on the left side. 30 seconds left in the four-on-three power play. As Hargrove feeds it towards the left corner, bouncing off the boards, Crone gets it. Crone gets it up top for Finley. Finley now skates north-south, drops it off for Crone. Back to Finley. He's in the left circle. Back to Crone. One-timer, and it's blocked. It's blocked by Zach Sekos. Finley over to Hargrove, gets it across, shot saved by Miner as Combs will throw it back to the far side, taken by Finley. Five seconds left in the four on three. Allen gets it to the right side for Hargrove, just outside the circle. Now to the left side as now we're skating five on four. Hargrove gets over there, right joins the play. He collides with Hargrove, right gets the puck, tried to clear it out. It stays in. Good play by Allen to keep it in. It's the former Grizzly, Eric Williams. He'll throw it to the left side for Crone, who gets it cross ice. And the puck bounced off a grizzly stick and flies off the protective netting. Seven seconds left in Allen's five-on-four power play. Boy, the Americans work the puck around pretty well, but the Grizzlies keep the one-nothing lead. Good job by Trent Miner and company. The power, the penalty kill is looking beautiful for the Grizzlies here tonight. They're not really letting the Americans do what they want to do. Yes, they're moving the puck around the perimeter, but they're not getting any quality scoring chances. Uh, all, amazing job by the Grizzlies penalty kill here. Looks like Allen's going to get another penalty. Hank Crone gets two minutes. Not sure what he did. It was must have been uh, arguing a call or something, but Crone gets two minutes in the penalty box. So we're going to skate four on four for seven seconds, and then after that, the Grizzlies are going to get another power play. And the Grizzlies did get one power play that was scored by Taryn Pfizer earlier in the second period, and the Grizzlies' process has certainly been a lot better. And with that penalty, the draw is going to go to the Allen zone. So it'll be an offensive zone faceoff for the Grizzlies. On the Pfizer goal, it was scored 216, and uh, it's the first professional point for Jacob Semek. Semek in his second pro game gets his first pro point, and Dakota Raby gets his 24th assist. Raby now has a point in 12 of his last 14 games. Draws in the left circle. Sekos will take it against, Raby, uh, against Robido. Draw one by the Grizzlies. Semek will throw it to the right side. Now it rolls back over to the left. We got to see if, Se- if Shearer's in there. Shearer might have gotten hurt. Set goes over to Semek as McDonald's out of the penalty box. Raby will, will join the play, replacing McDonald. As the puck goes to the near corner, Raby delivers a hit. He goes down, and he gets back to his feet. Or Actually, Raby's still down. Semek's also down, and we get a whistle. It looked like a lot of action there. Robido has some words for Raby. Robido's a pretty strong guy, even though they're about the, the same height. Um, let's see if a penalty gets called either way. As there is a collision there, two Grizzlies and two Americans. And well, we're not sure where the puck ended up. It looks like the draw is going to be at neutral ice. 14.55 left in the second, 139 left in a Grizzlies power play. Utah is one for four on the man advantage so far tonight. You mentioned Raby now has a point in 12 of his last 14 games. And for Taron Pfizer, he now leads the club with 10 power play goals this season. That came 216 into the second. We'll see if the Grizzlies can replicate that here on their power play. Grizzlies win the draw. Jacob Semek getting some power play time. We'll see if we can see James Schur out there. This would normally be where Schur is at. He might be out of the lineup right now. And Cam Strong, we haven't seen him since he got hurt early in the second period. Grizzlies gained the blue line. As Cameron right to the right side gets tripped up by Colton Hargrove. No call, and the Americans clear it out. 117 left in the Grizzlies power play. Could have argued that Utah could have been on a five-on-three power play there. As Semek will throw it to the near side. Raby crosses center, left wing. Now he gains the line, drifts over to his right. Grizzlies chip it across. It bounced off a of Hargrove as Semek will throw it to the right side. Cameron right skates towards the circle, takes a righty shot. Saved by Perry. Rebound out in front. Colton Hargrove, a ricochet off the end boards of his own zone. He's in the corner, surrounded by three Grizzlies. Raby trying to hack it out. Less than 50 seconds left in Utah's power play. Puck still in the corner now. Squirts out to the left point. Grizzlies get it. Seco's lefty shot and it goes wide. As Jacob Semek tries to pitchfork it out to the corner. Didn't get very far. Chris Maleri gathers it and clears it out. Grizzlies will make a line change. Zach Seco's behind his net. 
Cam Strong's out of the lineup. I haven't seen him for a little bit. And there's James Schur. Luckily, Schur is on the ice. He was just replaced by Semek on that power play unit. McCallchuk crosses center ice, left wing pass to Fitz. Dylan gets to the left circle. Now he drifts over to the corner. Fitz in the near side, throws it up top for Martin. He'll take a lefty shot, save, rebound, shot, and a score! Dylan Fitz gets his 16th of the year as the Grizz get their second power play goal of the night, and Utah leads 2-0. Like Bryson Martin's going to get an assist. That'll be a six assist in his last eight games as he fired a shot from the right side, bounced off of Perry, and getting the rebound on the left side, and there was nobody around him. Dylan Fitz converts, getting his 16th of the year. Yeah, Tyson, we talked about those rebounds in the first period for Chase Perry. Dylan Fitz, right place, right time. He's able to cash in 2 nothing Grizzlies lead. Looks like they're going to go to video replay for some reason. I'm not really sure why. I mean, it looked like Fitz's goal was clean. Yeah, but it looks like the referee's got the tablet out, the scores table. Right now, it's a 2-0 Grizzlies lead. As there's, there was 10 seconds left in the power play when Fitz scored, so we talked about what the power play needs to do to get going. But here in the second period, it gets going. Referee comes out of the box. He signals no goal. I don't know why. He signaled no goal. I mean, was there traffic in front of Chase Perry? The referee's arguing the case. I'm not sure Connor McDonald knows why. But the goal is disallowed. So it stays a 1-0 game. 10 seconds left in the Grizzlies power play. I don't know what it was. It looked like shot was taken. It looked like a routine rebound goal that was scored by Dylan Fitz. But the goal gets disallowed. Not across the goal line. I don't know. Guy, do you have any clue? I'm not entirely sure, Tyson. You mentioned uh, the rebound there. Perhaps there was some uh, interference on Chase Perry. It didn't look like that was the case to me. Uh, the other case could be an offside, uh, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. 13-26 left in the second. Goal was disallowed. That was scored by Dylan Fitz. He still has 15 on the year. Allen wins the face off and clears it out. So the Grizzly is going to be unsuccessful in the power play as Robido takes it away from McDonald. As the puck behind Utah's net over to the right corner. As Grizzlies take it away, as James Shear will move it ahead. As a bounce off an American at neutral ice, and that was Grant Abear. As the puck goes back over to the Americans, who lifting out the center ice, gathered by Shear. Shear gains the line, skates down the middle, get it over to Fitz on the left side, take a shot, saved by Perry. Rebound goes behind the net. Fitz gets hit. Jamison skates towards the corner. McCall check on the ice as well. As Fitz delivers a hit on Dalton Galley. Now Abear gets over there, pins Shear to the boards, make that Fitz. Now Abear's throwing some punches and skating over there is Keaton Jamison. But right, for some reason, it looked like Grant, Grant Abear started throwing punches at Dylan Fitz in the corner. Now it looks like everybody's found a dance partner. Why well, that's got to be a penalty on Abear throwing punches there at Dylan Fitz while Fitz, Fitz was on the ice waiting for, and uh, and somebody finally came over there and there was Keaton Jamison. As there's 12:43 left in the second, Robido. If there's going to be any action, Robido is going to be in the middle of it as he's over to the corner. He picks his glove up. I got to imagine the Grizzlies is going to be back on the power play there. It didn't look like Fitz did anything, but it looked like Grant Abear. Got real physical. Got his, you know, started throwing punches at Fitz. Gave him the business a little bit. I'm not too sure what the thought process there was from A Bear, but I mean, you're punching a man while he's down. Dylan Fitz didn't really have a chance to defend himself there. But good news is, is James Shear is out on the ice, so he's back. They must have just adjusted the power play lines a little bit. Unfortunately, we haven't seen Cam Strong since he got hurt. Robido's in the penalty box. So is Dalton Galley. So two Americans are in the box right now. Uh, we'll, we'll see if anybody's in for the Grizzlies. 12.43 left in the second period. We've seen a lot of interesting action. The Grizzlies get a power play goal with Dylan Fitz or with, uh, with Taryn Pfizer. And Dylan Fitz had a power play goal that was disallowed. We're not entirely sure why. Uh, four minutes are on the clock for Dalton Galley. It wasn't that Abear, the guy who was, throw, it was uh, giving Dylan Fitz the business. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think it might have been 22, not 77. Oh, now the, 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 the yeah. St. Patrick's Day jerseys. You know, the sevens tough. look like twos. Oh, well. Four minutes are on the clock for Dalton Galley, who gave Dylan Fitz the business over in the corner. So the Grizzlies are going to have a power play when we come back in 30 seconds. Utah leads 1 0 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, Tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. 
This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Utah leads 1-0 as Taryn Pfizer got a power play goal 216 in. Semick and Raby with the assist. And for Jacob Semick, it's his first pro point. And for Dakota Raby, he's now got a point in 12 of his last 14. With 10 seconds left in a power play, looked like Dylan Fitz scored on a rebound from a Bryson Martin shot. It got disallowed. We're not entirely sure why, uh, but, you know, stays a one nothing game. And then Dalton Galley was giving Dylan Fitz the business over in the corner. I thought for a second it was Grant A. Bear, but it looks like it's going to be, I imagine, a double minor for roughing for Galley. And so the Grizzlies are going to get a four-minute power play. Seen quite a few of those green Mighty Ducks jerseys in attendance tonight as it is St. Patrick's Day. Obviously, Dallas Stars wear green, and the Dallas Stars are about 30 minutes away from Allen. As Allen, Texas is one of those, I don't know if it's far enough you can call it a suburb or if you just call it its own area. As everybody having a good time tonight? Dalton Galley, uh, they haven't posted the penalty on the uh, box score sheet on the ECHL app, but I imagine it's a double minor for roughing. And guy with the Grizzlies up one nothing could could have been 2 nothing if that goal would have counted. And the Grizzlies get back on the power play again. And you think about the power play. It's been looking really sharp over the course of this game. Grizzlies do have a power play goal in this one. You give them four minutes. Oh, that's exactly what the doctor ordered. Especially since it looks like the power play is starting to connect. We're back to live action. Allen wins the face off and they clear it out. Trent Miner behind his net cuts it off. Grizzlies skating from right to left as we see it from Flow Sports. Your mind's eye see it on YouTube. That's right, YouTube. Uh, we know what it's known for, but we'll try to paint a picture for you. Grizzlies in their own zone. Sekos with a right wing pass. Pfizer across the center ice. He'll chip it across along the near boards for Ray B. We'll skate back into the Grizzlies zone as Utah wants to enter with a little bit of momentum. It is an extended power play. We believe it's a double minor for roughing for Dalton Galley. As Jacob Semick looks like he's got good size and speed. He's about 6'1 and 190 pounds, similar size to Tho. And now it goes to the right side for Pfizer, who gains the line, but it's poked away by Allen as it rolls deep in the Grizzlies zone as Miner behind his net plays it. He'll throw it to the near side for Raby as he'll skate over towards the Utah goal line. Now Raby chips over to Semek. Semek skates down the middle, drops it off for five, for Sekos. Back to Raby at center ice, trying to get to Cameron Wright, but it gets poked away by McCauley. Now Colton Hargrove skates in, left circle, shot, and it's blocked by Raby. Puck still in play as Grizzlies get it. As Utah skates down the middle, Jacob Semek crosses center ice. Now he veers out to the left. Throws it behind his back for Sekos, who gains the line. Sekos just about got blown up by McCauley, but he avoided him. As Semek over in the left point, back to Pfizer, skates towards the left circle, now to the near goal line. As Utah gets up top for Semek on the left side, back to right. He skates towards the right circle, takes the lefty shot, and it's blocked by Sossaman. Puck goes back up top for Semek, who wheels it across. Right point, Zach Sekos gets it poked away. Now it's at center ice, two on one. Semek's the one for Utah. As Hargrove centers it to McCauley, who swings and misses. And that was a golden opportunity for Allen to tie it up. But Utah still leads one nothing. Grizz still on the power play. Cameron right, left wing, shot gets blocked. Now Raby takes it, lefty shot, saved by Perry. Rebound goes to Allen. 2.05 left in the double minor for roughing, we believe. Allen dumps it all the way deep into the Grizzly zone. The Americans make a line change. Now we're in the second half of the double minor. As Grizzlies moving out to the left side for Shearer, he throws a rink-wide pass. It's picked off by Jack Combs. Now the Americans have the puck in their own end, and they'll sail it all the way out towards Trent Minor. It ricochets off the end boards. Martin in the area gets physical as he holds up an American. As it goes back to the Grizzlies. Oh, I think they're going to call Bryson Martin for holding. Yeah, it looked like a good call. I was thinking that they might see it as Bryson Martin was holding up Allen in the far corner. And he's going to serve two minutes. So we'll skate four on four for a minute 39. And then Allen will have an abbreviated power play. Good call by the official there. It looked like Martin wouldn't let him go. Yeah, and unfortunately, that will end the man advantage for the Grizzlies. We go back to four on four uh, for the multiple time in this game. But, I mean, it's interesting to mention that uh, it was a double minor for roughing for Galley. He also got a 10-minute misconduct for continuing altercation. And Mikel Robido also got a 10-minute misconduct. So those two will be in the penalty box. We'll see them later on in the game as it's just a misconduct and not a game misconduct for both guys. Draw one by the Grizzlies. As we're skating four on four, the Grizzlies scored a four on four goal last night. They have five this season. In that situation, they've given up four. Connor McDonald will throw it into the Allen zone and chase after it. Tyler Penner over there. He hits Zachary Massacott. Allen with the puck. Unfortunately, we haven't seen Cam Strong in the second period. Hopefully he'll be okay. Gagnon skates towards the right circle, stops in the corner of the offensive zone. 
He'll whip it around the boards. Allen behind the net. Finley gets tripped up. Is that call being made? We're not sure. Combs over to Finley. Puck over to the left side as Eric Williams dances around in the far corner, throws it up top as the Americans skate towards the left circle. Grizzlies take it away. Zach Sekos deep in his own end of the far circle as he'll skate it out to neutral. Sekos with good speed, crosses center ice. Now he gains the line, drifts over to the left point, gets to the penner. He tried to feed it across the right, and it bounces off an American as it goes deep into the Allen zone. As Utah, back on the right side, 9.24 left in the second. Grizzlies in the right point as a right point shot saved by Perry. Really tough to tell who took that shot. 9.19 left in the second. We're skating four on four. Utah leads one nothing. 37 seconds left in the four on four. Then after that, Allen will have an abbreviated power play. Time out on the ice. We're back in one minute as Utah leads one nothing on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account. Nine nineteen left in the second. Utah leads one nothing. Guy, the Grizz are playing good hockey right now. They are Tyson. I really like the way that the Grizzlies have come out and played in this game. It seems like they've been dictating the terms. Their offense is clicking, and we finally see the power play get a goal. They've been struggling as of late, but man, have they looked sharp in this game? Grab whatever beverage is near you and chug it right now. It looks like that's what they're doing over in Allen, Texas. Grizzlies lead one nothing. Could have easily been two nothing. We're not entirely sure why that gold got disallowed on Fitz. As he got the rebound to the left side, didn't look like there was anybody near Chase Perry. Wish we would have seen a replay. Maybe we will during the intermission. Draw is going to be in the Allen zone over to the right side as it's won by the Americans. It's a camera high atop the arena over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. Allen skating from our left to our right as we see it on Flow Sports. As the Americans skate down the middle. Now they're drifting out the center ice. Now the Americans get it into the attack zone. As Hank Crone, who had four points last night, he's the league's leading scorer. He battles with Sure and gets it poked away. Cam Wright takes the puck. Wright throws it across. Is now on the near side for Taron Pfizer. Gets around Hargrove easily. Now Pfizer crosses center ice. He'll chip it over to the left side. Bounced off a right stick and rolls to the corner. Wright collides with the boards with Allen assisting him as the Americans skate around the net. 8.43 left in the second as Hargrove crosses center ice. Gains the line. Skates towards the right left circle. They got a lefty shot that goes wide. Cameron Wright gets the puck. He'll move it ahead. This goes out to center ice. And it looks like the Grizzlies are shorthanded for 10 seconds. As Sossaman takes the puck, he'll move it ahead to neutralize as the Americans cross center. And now out of the box is Bryson Martin as it's a Utah disaster cleanup successful penalty kill. Wink wide pass looking for Bryson Martin goes wide, no icing as Chase Perry plays it behind his net. He'll throw it to the near side. Grizzlies chase after it. Ain't Crone in the area. Jamison. Gets the puck. Kill skate towards the corner. Get to Penner. Backhand shot. Yeah, Might have hit the side of the net. As Dylan Fitz skates over there, he gets the puck. He's in the right corner. I try to get it out in front. It's picked off by the Americans in front of the crease. And they'll glide it ahead to Liam Finley. Finley's got outstanding speed. He'll drop it off for Sossaman. Sossaman, 5'9", 199 pounds. He collides and drags down Tyler Penner. Dylan Fitz skates towards the right circle. Take a shot. Saved by Perry. Rebound goes to Allen. Surprised the call wasn't made as both guys dragged each other to the ice. Jack Combs skates towards his left. He'll get over to the left circle. Uh, le right left wing one-timer goes wide. because They ain't get much on it. Finley throws it around the wall as Jack Combs skates to the corner. Combs in the left circle, drifts it up top for Finley. Now they glide it to the right circle for Eric Williams to take a shot. And it kind of lifted on him. Stays in play to the left point. As the puck goes back to Combs. He looks for a centering pass. Finley swings and misses. Now McCauley with a shot saved by Minor. Christian Simeone crosses center ice. Simeone left point, drops it off as he gains the line over to over to Sekos. Sekos rink wide pass, deflected off a stick and rolls to the near corner. As Simeone over there, he gets dragged around. Sekos throws it up top for Pouncey. He'll take a righty shot, and it's blocked by McCauley. As the Americans will carry it out to center ice. As Jack Combs loses it, Bryson Martin, fresh out of the penalty box, gets it. Martin skates down the middle. He's still in his own zone. 
They'll pass it ahead. It bounced off of Sekos, and Allen will glide it to the right side. Aiden Brown skates to the right, right circle. They get shot. Saved by Miner. Rebound goes to the far wing boards. It hits off the wall as Grizzlies. Jared Power gets it to Sekos. Sekos gains the line, stops on the right side, throws it up top for Semic. It goes past him as it ricochets off the near board. Semic gets it back at the Utah blue line. He'll skate out in front of Trent Miner. Semic in his second pro game out of Arizona State. Played there for four years. Though we'll chip it out to center ice. Grizzlies get it. McCallchuk skiing gains the line. He'll throw it to the corner as he gets around a skater. Gagnon collides with McCallchuk. McCallchuk delivers a hit on Gagnon as the puck rolls along the near wall. Now Allen will carry it out to center ice. They cross the red night line. Now they cross the blue. Crone dumps it to the corner. Crone spins it from one corner to the other as it goes back over. Crone gets it as he got a pass from A Bear. As the Americans chip it back to the near corner, Sossman skates over there. He'll throw it back to Aiden Brown behind the net. Brown battles with Raby, and Aaron Tho will glide it to the far side. Grizzlies moving out to center, but they couldn't reach it. Could McCall Chuck? Now it goes back to Sossman on the right side. He'll bounce it off a of Grizzly, and it goes to McCall Chuck left side. He gains the line, throws it to the high slot for Jameson. He'll take a shot, and it glances off the stick of Massacott and flies out of play. 5.33 left in the second. Time out of the ice. We'll take one as well. We're back in one minute. Utah leads Allen one to nothing on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. 5.33 left in the second period. Special teams has made the difference. Utah is one for seven on the power play. Grizzlies already with four successful Utah disaster cleanup penalty kills. They are perfect four for four on the penalty kill. Taron Pfizer has the only goal of the game. He scored 216 and his league lead is team leading 23rd of the year. It's his 10th power play tally. And the assist went to Jacob Semek and Dakota Raby. Guy, it's been a good one here so far. It's been a lot of fun, Tyson, and the difference so far has been the special teams battle. The Grizzlies one for seven, but that's the difference right now, and they've got the lead. It's possible they called goaltender interference on the Grizzlies, and that's why it's still a one nothing game, as Dylan Fitz could have scored on the power play earlier in the second period. Off the drop, Utah wins it. Fitz with a left-wing shot that goes wide. Zach Sekos delivers a hit. Dylan Fitz over there as well as Allen clears it into the Grizzlies zone. Kyle Pouncey chases after it. He gets it. He skates behind Trent Miner's net. He stops. They'll throw it to the far side as Grizzlies get tripped up as it goes out to center. Grizzlies cross center, left wing, and skating over his Fitz as Allen delivers a hit on him, and, get, and Fitz gets divorced from the puck as Allen out to neutral ice. Throws it back as Grizzlies move it ahead. Now Allen at center ice will throw it back into their own zone. Less than five minutes left in the second period. As Colton, as Colton Hargrove loses it at the Allen blue line, Grizzlies skate towards the right point. They'll tap it off the near the end wall. Grizzlies to the right side. We'll throw it back up top, but it goes all the way deep in the Grizzlies zone. As Trent Miner behind his net will give way to Connor McDonald, who will push it ahead to the Allen blue line. Penner dumps it in. Raby chases after it. Puck goes to the right point. Allen will throw a rink wide pass to Liam Finley. Pass connects. Now he goes tape to tape to the left side for Combs to take a left wing shot. Saved by Miner. Why Allen really spread the ice there. Finley got a cutting Jack Combs, who skated to the left circle. And Miner was able to make the save. It stays a one nothing game. And, hey, it looks like Trent Miner's got his A game tonight. It does, Tyson. And that's exactly what the Grizzlies needed in this game. Low-scoring affair. Trent Miner's been solid all night. Draw's going to be in the Grizzlies zone. Well, it looks like Cameron Wright's picked up a penalty. And so it looks like Wright gets two minutes. 426 left in the second period. And we didn't get to see the official signal or anything. But it looks like two minutes are put on the score bug. Over in Allen, and it looks like the Grizzlies are going to be shorthanded. Utah's four for four on the penalty kill, and we'll let you know when we figure out what the penalty is on for Cam is for Cameron Wright. 
Allen's on the power play. Chris Mullary will throw it up top as the Americans in the attack zone as Finley over to Crone. Back to the left side for Mullary. He winds and fires. Lefty shots blocked by Miner. Grizzlies try to clear it out. Mullary keeps it in. Right wing pass to Crone. Back to Mullary. He's in the high slot. Now to the left side as Allen with a left wing shot. Saved by Miner. And the puck deflects out of play. 4.05 left in the second period. 140 left. In the power play, Guy, what's the penalty on for Cameron Wright? Looks like Cameron Wright got two minutes for slashing, Tyson. So Wright's in the box, two minutes for slashing. Wright has over 100 penalty minutes on the season. In fact, he reached the century mark last night, and he's picked up a couple penalties here so far. So Cameron Wright doing everything for the Grizzlies, scoring points, picking up penalties, and really doing just about everything. I think he's selling popcorn as well. Allen has the puck as Hank Crone. Left side, shot blocked about 10 feet in front of Miner. Grizzlies in the near corner. Spin it back to the corner as it went behind the net. Uh, as it goes back to Allen, Jack Combs drifts over to the left side, but nobody was home. Hank Crone gathers it and spins it around. It tapped off the far corner, stayed there, and McDonald clears it out. Mullary moves it ahead. Allen crosses center ice, right wing to Hargrove. Hargrove, I tried to center, and it got picked off by Jacob Semek, who clears it out. Halfway through Allen's fifth power play of the game, Utah still leads 1-0. As Mullary skates around the net, he's now at neutral ice. He crosses center, being checked by Penner. As Mullary gets it poked away, Penner gets it. He'll move it across to Pfizer. It goes past him and skates towards the near boards. Pfizer gets it center ice, skates towards the left circle, takes a shot and fanned on it. Finley was back checking in. It goes back to center ice. 35 seconds left in the power play. Stephon Fournier will drop it off for Mullary. So move it ahead. Allen's now at neutral ice. They cross center. Kobe McCauley gains the line and drifts over to the left wing. McCauley over in the corner, spins her along the wall. Cut off in the right point by Eric Williams, the fourth-year pro out of Northeastern. As Fournier moves it around to the left side, Allen gets it to the left circle. Now across to Williams. Williams had a goal last night. He looks to center. It goes between the legs of McCauley. As four seconds left in the power play, Sossman up top. He'll take a right, he'll fake it over a shot, throw it to the right side. One timer goes wide. Right side of the penalty box. It's a Utah disaster cleanup, successful penalty kill. Fournier backhand shot saved by Miner. Everybody's in the crease. Puck's still in play. As Allen gets to the far side, they'll get it up top for Sossman. Sossman will throw it to the right side. McCauley chips it out in front. Grizzlies poke it away. Good job by Bryson Martin. Now it goes to Cameron Wright, fresh out of the box. He skates along the left wing. He crosses center ice. Now he steps over the blue line, drifts over to the right circle. He'll take a righty shot, saved by Perry. Rebound goes to Allen. Less than two minutes left in the second period. Utah leads 1-0. Grizzlies moving out to the Allen blue line, where it's taken by Sosserman for the Americans. Sosserman skates back to his goal line. Now he'll move it ahead. Rink wide pass connects. Allen skates towards the left circle, drops it off. The Americans skate towards the right side. Aiden Brown with a shot and hits the pipe. Now McDonald, now Fitz tried to clear it out, bounced off of McDonald. Fitz gets it back, and this time he clears it out. 130 left in the second period. Allen re-enters the zone. They throw a rink-wide pass. It's picked off by Jamison. Now to Shearer. Shearer at neutral ice, crosses the center and dumps it in as Raby over to the right side gets it up top for Fitz. Fitz glides it off an American and goes back to Allen. The American skate from left to right. Gangnon crosses the center ice, left wing pass off the boards. Goes to Aiden Brown. He'll skate towards the circle, take a shot. It's blocked by McDonald's stick, and the puck flies out of play. 108 left in the second period. Utah still leads 1-0. Grizzlies once again getting the job done on the penalty kill. Yeah, another great penalty, successful UDK penalty for the gri- penalty kill for the Grizzlies. And really, that's been the difference so far in this game. Allen's had their power play chances, but the Grizzlies have been there to close the door. Allen has outshot Utah 21-20. Uh, it was a... Both teams looks like had 10 shots in the first period. Allen has outshot Utah 11 to 10 in the second period. Good job by the Grizzlies. Penalty kill. They're a successful five for five tonight. They're one for seven on the power play. That's the difference in the game. They show a replay and Aiden Brown hit the post. That could have tied it up. And then McDonald tried to clear it out and bounced it off of Fitz. An awkward moment there for the Grizzlies, but they keep the lead. And is off the draw, left wing shot saved by Miner. He holds on 55 seconds left in the second period. This looks like Kobe McCauley has been active tonight, but he hasn't found the score sheet. McCauley's got five goals and 13 assists in 23 games, wearing number 29 for the Allen Americans. McCauley used to play with Idaho. In past years, he gave the Grizzlies all sorts of fits. McCauley will take the draw against Zach Sekos. Unfortunately, we haven't seen Cam Strong since he got hurt earlier in the second period. Hopefully he's okay. 
And whatever time he misses, hopefully he won't miss too much. And it looks like we'll do the faceoff over again. The linesman says, my bad. McCauley will take the draw against Zach Sekos. Sekos has been outstanding for the Grizzlies. He's got a point in three straight games. Sekos has a point in 15 of his 25 games with the Grizzlies this season. Sekos has taken a lot of the big faceoffs for Utah. This time it's won by Allen. And the linesman, well, linesman's going to have to do it the third time. At some point, it might have a face-off violation, one of those rare penalties you see once a year. I think it might. Well, let's see if it gets called. I don't know the Grizzlies are going to make a change as they'll get a couple fresh skaters on the ice. Let's see if the third time's a charm for the face-off over in the far circle. Now it's Cameron Wright taking the drop against Kobe McCauley. This time, the puck is successfully dropped. Allen wins the face-off. As the puck goes to the end wall, as Jack Combs the right side, the veteran will throw it up top. Righty one-timer, saved by Miner. Left side, Allen spins along the wall. Jack Combs over on the right side. He'll throw it up top. As somebody off the screen, puck exited the zone. As it looks like Mikael Robido fresh out of the box after serving his 10-minute misconduct. On to make that Sossman, 23. So throw it to the left side, and the puck lifts high into the air. And out of play, hopefully, if a fan was in the area, uh, hopefully they're okay. As the puck flew into the spectator area, 27 seconds left in the second period. Utah leads 1-0. Although it looks like action's been in the Grizzlies zone a little bit more in the second half of this second period. It looks like uh, they're looking at the puck, and luckily it looks like everybody's okay. Guy in a blue hoodie, sporting a beard, holds the puck up and says, I got it. He's going to... Well, Hopefully that's his girlfriend that he's next to, and, uh, you know, he'll probably give the puck to her. Draw's going to be at center ice. I never did get a puck when I came to a game as a fan. I had to go to the team store and buy one. As Allen has it in their own zone, they skate from left to right. Less than 20 seconds left in the period. Right wing pass to Combs. He gets around Raby, and now it goes to Sossman. Skates towards the right circle. I try to feather it out in front to Hargrove, and the pass went wide. Less than 10 seconds is... Fitz skates into the offensive zone, over to the right side, looks to center, puck lifts in the air, and it's gloved about chest high by Chase Perry as he holds on with two seconds left in the second period. Well, guy, very entertaining second period, and it looks like Utah, barring something crazy, will have a lead. It's been a fun one so far, Tyson. Great action at both ends, although you did mention that play has seemingly been in the Grizzlies and uh, more often in this second period, especially in this last two minutes, something to keep an eye on. Heading into the third. Draws give me the right circle. Keaton Jamison will take it against Colton Hargrove. And the linesman drops the puck. It's won by Utah, but time runs out in the second period as Utah leads 1-0. Of course, my screen froze right at the end of the period, but that doesn't matter. The period's over right now, and the Grizzlies have a 1-0 lead. Utah has only lost once when leading after two periods. Well, when we come back, Guy Krenz will recap the first uh, 40 minutes of play as Utah got on the board two and a half minutes into the second period as Taron Pfizer got a power play goal. Utah also had a goal that was disallowed, and Trent Miner has been outstanding in net as he stopped them all. As Utah leads 1-0, we're back in two minutes for the Rio Tinto Kennecott intermission report on the Utah Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. 
Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Second intermission, Utah leads one nothing. Guy, what's happened in the first 40 minutes of play? Well, Tyson, after 40 minutes in a tight defensive battle, the Grizzlies lead one nothing off a power play goal two minutes and 16 seconds into the second period by Terran Pfizer, his club-leading 23rd goal of the year, assisted by Jacob Semek and Dakota Raby. And congratulations to Semek. That's his first pro point. So the Grizzlies lead one nothing in a period where we saw a lot of penalties in the first period. That wasn't really the case. I spoke too soon saying, oh, well, we didn't see a lot of physicality in the first period. In the second period, the floodgates opened eight combined penalties, four for Allen, four for Utah. Two Allen Americans got 10-minute misconducts. Mikhail Robido and Dalton Galley each received a 10-minute misconduct, 7-17 into the period. Cam Strong uh, did uh, crash awkwardly into the boards after trying to drive to the net. He did not return uh, into the game and Dylan Fitz had a goal about midway through the second period what seemed like it was going to be a power play goal uh, we didn't really get a replay on that one but unfortunately it seems like they did call that one back due to goaltender interference and Becky on YouTube uh, seemingly tonight's Grizzlies insider she tells us that she was able to look back on replay on flow sports and she says that they probably did call goaltender interference because an Allen player fell into the crease while wrestling with a Grizzly and uh Seems like the case was that there was goaltender interference, and so it looked like the Grizzlies were going to have a 2 nothing lead, but it's a one nothing game after 40 minutes of play, and it seems like that favors the Grizzlies, as usually when teams get into an offensive shootout with Allen, they lose. Grizzlies are 1-for-7 on the power play. Allen is 0-for-5, and Allen leads the shot count 23-21. to Allen took 13 shots in the second period. Utah took 11. Both teams took 10 shots in the first period. As for shots on goal for the Grizzlies, Cameron Wright has three, as does Dakota Raby. They lead the club for shots throughout the course of this game. Trent Miner has been solid. He stopped all 23 shots that he's seen. But Tyson, you got to think about that physicality in the second period. It could set the stage for a wild third. You know, the Grizzlies have a one goal lead, but it's just that, it's just one goal. Allen's been shut out one time this season. That was last Saturday over in Boise as they lost 5 nothing. And for the Grizzlies, you know, you almost think about that next goal. Can you get some insurance, make it a 2 nothing game? Obviously, you know, we know what a high-powered offense Allen is. I think it's been a great defensive effort so far. I mean, Allen's had some good looks among the 20 shots that they've had. Trent Miner has been outstanding in that. He's not allowed many rebounds. I think the defensive unit led by McDonald and Shearer, and I think Bryce Martin's played pretty well here through in the, in the first two periods. I think Jacob Semek has really settled in and has played well, and this is his second pro game. I think he's going to be a keeper, and Aaron Tho has also looked pretty strong for the Grizzlies as well. So you combine all that, and really you combine you know the Grizzlies and their forward play being the aggressor. Obviously, as you and I both noticed, it uh, looked like Allen had the puck in the offensive zone quite a bit later in the second period. But it stays a one nothing game, and I think for the Grizzlies, you just going to have to – Find a way to take it one shift at a time because this Allen team can attack at any given moment. And really with the Fords they have, you know, it just takes a couple passes before they find a way to get themselves a great look. Yeah, Tyson Allen is certainly a dangerous team. You don't want to give them any sort of momentum as they will just take that and run with it. And I really thought the Grizzlies played an excellent second period. I thought for about 18 minutes in the second, the Grizzlies played a perfect period. They were tight defensively. They got the power play goal, something that we've been looking for ever since Andrew Nielsen got traded. So they clicked on the power play, but it seems like in the last two minutes, the tide really turned and Allen got some really good offensive opportunities. And they looked like the Allen Americans that we're used to seeing, moving the puck around a lot, getting great scoring chances. Uh, so that's the only thing that really worries me heading into the third period. As I said, you don't want to give them anything, and they will just take and take it and run with it. So for the Grizzlies, uh, it's kind of good that they go back to the locker room, kind of get a reset here, because Allen was seemingly building some momentum towards the end of the period. 
Grizzlies lead 1-0, and it's a big game in the Mountain Division standings as Utah, Allen, and Wichita are each tied for third with 59 standings points. Kansas City is in second place with 60 points, and through two periods, the Mavericks lead Wichita 3-0. Ryan Harrison, Nick Pastajov, and John Schiavo each found the back of the net as Kansas City leads Wichita 3-0. The Grizzlies went 7-1 and one against Kansas City this season. The Grizzlies have won each of their first two games against the Wichita Thunder. Now, don't forget, Wichita is going to be at Maverick Center for a three-game series March 29th, 31st, and April 1st. So that's going to be big in the standings in Wichita, which really started out strong. They were in second place for just about the entire first half of the season, and Wichita has fallen on hard times. They trail 3 nothing in the second period to Kansas City. After one period, Rapid City leads Tulsa 1-0. Uh, looked like Tulsa's really, Rapid City's really going to need to win some games here as they're in sixth place in the Mountain Division, but they're only a couple of games back as they've got 53 standings points. They are six points behind that cluster that's tied for third with Utah, Allen, and Wichita. For Rapid City, they are four and six in their last 10 games. They're going to need a big stretch, or they're going to miss the postseason uh, for the second time in their last three years. Rapid City leads 1-0 heading into the second period against Tulsa. Late first period, they got a wild one going over at Idaho Central Arena as the Idaho Stillheads lead 4-2 over Orlando. That game's still going on in the first period. Um, looks like uh, Orlando scored twice in the first three minutes and 25 seconds, and then Idaho has responded with four unanswered as Jade Miller, Wade Murphy, Jordan Kawaguchi, and Matt Register have each scored on Orlando goaltender LaFontaine. Uh, looks like Boyko is in net for Idaho. We haven't faced Boyko, but the Grizzlies haven't seen Idaho in a couple months. Boyko has stopped three of five as Idaho has 12 shots and Orlando has five. That game is a wild one over Idaho Central Arena. Four to two the score late in the first period. Uh, Guy, what do you think about, uh, you know, the Grizzlies playoff race here? Uh, you know, the Looks like, you know, they're in a battle with Allen and uh, Kansas City, but the Grizzlies really handled Kansas City well, and the Grizzlies played well against Wichita in, May, in March. I think big picture, I think the Grizzlies are in pretty good shape if they can find a way to win a few games here against Allen. I like the Grizzlies' chances right now, Talon and uh, Tyson, and you mentioned – uh, the Grizzlies' success against Kansas City and Wichita, and I think that's the key right there because if you think uh, there's five teams competing for four spots and uh, if two of those teams are going to drop out, you got to think it's either going to be Kansas City or Wichita, and both of those teams the Grizzlies have had success against. You think about this game right here. This is a huge game. Grizzlies, uh, Allen, and Wichita are all tied at 59 points or so. If that Kansas City score holds... Uh, then then Wichita would lose. They'd stay at 59. Allen would lose here if the Grizzlies win. They'd stay at 59. The Grizzlies would have sole possession of that third spot in the Mountain Division. So big game here, but I really like the way that the Grizzlies have played down the stretch. It seems like they've built up a lot of momentum. A lot of guys throughout the lineup are clicking, and that's exactly what you want to see come playoff time. When we come back to the Rio Tinto Kennecott Intermission Report, we'll go over some scores from around the world of sports, including one of the biggest upsets in sports history. That's coming up next. You're listening to the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro Card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro Card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new bean-to-cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand. 
so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Well, I should have DVR'd the Purdue Fairleigh Dickinson game. And we learned today that Fairleigh Dickinson is in Hackensack, New Jersey. I think everybody is going to find out what Fairleigh Dickinson's all about as they defeat Purdue. Fairleigh Dickinson was a 16 seed in the NCAA tournament. Purdue a one seed, and for the second time ever, a 16 seed defeats a one. Fairleigh Dickinson, 63, Purdue 58. That game was in the East region. And if you got Purdue, I ripped up my bracket uh, here during the second period, and I think everybody should probably do theirs as well. I'm not sure how far I had Purdue. I'm going to have to look at after the game. Uh, one of these uh, one of these spots has either Purdue's name or fairly, somebody else's name on there. Uh, but uh, Fairleigh Dickinson defeats Purdue 63-58, one of the biggest upsets in sports history. In the East region, Kentucky defeats Providence 61-53. Kentucky's a 6 seed. Providence was an 11. Gonzaga over Grand Canyon University 82-70. That's a West region matchup. Gonzaga moves on to the second round. Going on right now, 220 left in the second period. In the second half, uh, Drake and Miami are tied at 56. Drake, a 12th seed, trying to defeat a five in Miami. Just getting underway, six minutes in. Florida Atlantic uh, and, uh, and Memphis are tied at 11. Earlier today, Michigan State defeated USC 72-62. Xavier over Kennesaw State, 72-67. Baylor defeats UCSB, 74-56. St. Mary's over VCU, 63-51. Marquette, a two-seed in the East region. They defeat Vermont, 78-61. The 11-seed, Pitt Panthers. I know you had them winning the first-round matchup against Iowa State. Pitt, 59. Iowa State, 41. Creighton over NC State, 72-63. UConn had a big second half. They defeat Rick Pitino's Iona Club, 87-63. And later on tonight, I know after the game, Guy and I will watch a little bit of Montana State and Kansas State, as well as Arizona State and TCU. And in the Midwest region, Kent State taking on Indiana. Guy, it's that fun time of year. Baseball's getting underway. The NHL's coming down the stretch. You got basketball with the NCAA tournament. Uh, the Grizzlies season is coming down the wire, and we'll have the NFL draft in April and NFL free agency and trades going on right now. This is one of my favorite times of year, and hopefully the weather will start to improve as well. That's right. I'm looking forward to the weather getting a little warmer, but you're right. Great time for sports, and uh, really, you think about that uh, tournament going on, man. I, you ripped up your bracket. The yep. nail has already been in the coffin of my bracket. My bracket sucks, man. I, I think I picked, I think almost every single matchup that I picked to win the opposite happened. And Hey, it's a little bit better than my MLB bracket. I got every single pick on that one wrong. So I am improving, but I mean, that's just the, the beauty of sports, right? Is yep. you know, even though you can have a 16 seed against a one seed, there's always that small chance that they break through. And uh, just so happened that ha that happened tonight. So, I mean, that's just the beauty of sports. Really awesome to see. Just never know what's going to happen. That's what makes it so much fun. Utah leads one nothing. What do the Grizzlies need to do here in the third period to, to secure a victory and get two standings points? Well, Tyson, I'd say they need to do exactly what they've been doing. They've been shutting down Allen's fantastic four. Uh, they've done a really good job defensively in this game. They're getting looks offensively as well. I really like the Grizzlies' zone entries in this game, and I really like the play from Jacob Semick. It seems like he's settled into this Grizzlies lineup really nicely. He's got his first pro point tonight. And uh, I think the kids got more in tonight. I really like what I've seen from the Grizzlies so far. The Grizzlies are 21 and 1 when leading after two periods. We'll see if that trend continues here as Utah leads 1 0. And when we return in two minutes, we'll have third period action over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. As Guy and I are hanging out at the lobby of Maverick Center, Utah leads 1 0 as Terran Pfizer scored a power play goal 216 into the second period. That's the only goal in the game. Trent Miner has stopped all 23 shots he has seen. Chase Perry has stopped 20 of 21. 
We'll have the third period on the other side. Utah leads 1-0 on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club account today. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or iced. Enjoy a fresh cup today. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can and look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. Utah leads 1-0. Hopefully, we'll be able to see the screen during the third period. I'm wearing a lighter shade of green. Guy's got more of a professional shade of green. I think this green kind of reflects off the lighting a little bit if you're watching on YouTube. And, yes, we would like to show the game on YouTube. Uh, obviously, Flow Sports has the exclusive video rights. And just pretend that it's the radio. Uh, even though it is on YouTube and we know what YouTube's known for, just pretend you're listening to the radio on YouTube. And never mind the two guys there on your screen right now. Guy, Big third period coming up for the Grizzlies. They lead one nothing. We'll skate five on five to start the third period. Huge third period, Tyson. And the thing is, is the Grizzlies are right here with the Allen Americans. And I really thought coming to this game, the Grizzlies needed to play well and make a statement. They've done just that. You started action in the third. Allen in their green St. Patrick's themed specialty jerseys. They dump it into the Grizzlies zone. Utah chases after it. As Utah wearing a white jersey with black numbers and professional green trim. Allen skating from right to left. Left point shot goes wide. Puck towards the right corner as Allen battles with Utah. Aaron Thoe in the area. Puck drifts towards Dylan Fitz as Fitz crosses center ice. He'll dump it in and shot over to Chase Perry. He will hold on as Fitz took the shot from neutral ice. Perry gathers it 34 seconds into the third period. Utah leads 1-0. Sharp-looking specialty jersey for Allen. Those are auctioned off on the Dash Auction app. At least some of the game worn jerseys, and you can actually bet on the Grizzlies game worn jerseys that they're going to wear next Friday for military night, presented by Mountain Land Supply Company. I'm looking forward to that. That will be the middle game of the three game series between the Grizzlies and Cincinnati Cyclones. Draw is going to be over on the left side. Tyler Penner will take it against Kobe McCauley as the Grizzlies in the offensive zone. As Eric Williams having some words with Vladislav, or make that Cameron Wright. Cameron Wright, one of those guys, he gets under the opposing team's skin. As the linesman looking over his right shoulder, now he looks towards the dot. He'll drop the puck. Utah wins it. Dakota Raby skates towards the left corner, gets around Eric Williams. As Raby now on the right side, gets the puck in the corner, tries to get around Massacott. Raby over to Penner, right wing shot goes wide. And the puck stays in play, left point. Grizzlies get it back to the corner. Raby now Penner. Penner tries to feed it out in front. It bounced off a of Perry stick. Rolls back to the corner. Penner over to Raby. He looked to center it to Shearer. Glanced off an Allen stick. And rolls back to Penner on the left side. Gets up top for Raby. Raby skates to the corner. Gets hit by Eric Williams. As Cameron Wright skates around the net, he's now to the right side. As Wright will chip it over to the corner. Penner skates over there along with Massacott. Now Raby behind the net. Will skate towards the right corner. Penner's in the same area. As Eric Williams delivers a hit on 
Ray beat, and Allen gets the puck three on three. The Americans skate towards the right circle. Now they drift it to the left side. As it goes towards the point, Utah gets it. Cameron Wright will cross center ice on, on the near wing boards. And he'll dump it in. Chase Perry falls down as he was trying to play the puck behind the net. As it goes back to the near side, Allen moves it ahead. Grant Abair, left wing chip over to Fournier. Back to Abair. He'll skate around to take a shot and he scores. And Allen ties it up at one as Grant Abair skated around a Grizzly, got to the left circle, and went five pole on Trent Minor as the lights flicker back and forth as the lights turn a shade of red as Grant Abair high fives everybody on the Allen bench. As he goes five full on Trent Minor, good play by Grant Abair, who gets his seventh goal of the season. And just like that, we're tied at one. Yeah, Tyson, tough break here for the Grizzlies. I really thought that Allen had a hop in their step to start this third period, and it paid off for him. Abair with a burst of speed, he beats Minor, and we're tied. So we're tied at one. Grant Abair gets Allen's first goal, and he scored 141 into the third period. Draws at center ice. Keaton Jameson will take it for Utah. Looks like a pretty good Friday night crowd. Certainly a bigger crowd than they had last night. As it draws at center ice. So they show another replay. Bear got around three Grizzlies. He's a pretty good combination of size and speed. He's been one of Allen's more impressive players outside of the top four scores on their club. Grant Bear looks like he's going to be a keeper for Allen. As the draws at center ice, and it's won by the Americans. Allen skating from right to left here in the third period. As Allen moves it ahead, the Americans cross center ice and dump it in. Miner behind his net will chip it over to the far side. Goes back to Utah, and the puck glides along the far wing boards as Ryan Gagnon gets it deep in the Allen zone, skates around McCallchuck and around the Allen net. As Gagnon battles with McCallchuck, it goes over to Fournier. We'll chip it off an American as it goes out to neutralize. A bear, the goal scorer, will drop it off as crossing center ice is Dalton Galley back after serving his 10 minute misconduct. He'll dump it in. He collides with Aaron Thoe, goes back to the Grizzlies. McCall Chuck along the near wing. Looks like the ice is playing tricks on both teams as the puck goes back over to the Utah blue line. Hits off of Jamison as Allen will skate back into the offensive zone. Aaron Thoe moves it ahead. Now it's taken by Jared Power. He skates the right circle. He gets it poked away. Now Power. Feeds it across to McCallchuck. He'll take a righty shot. Saved by Perry. And he will hold on as McCallchuck took the shot from the left wing on a pass from Jared Power. But Chase Perry was very busy last night, stopping 47 to 51. And because of that, I was a little bit surprised that he got the start tonight. And so far this evening, he's only allowed one goal. We're tied at one with 17 27 left in the third. A Bears goal was assisted by Fournier and Chris Mullary, 141 into the third period. As we're tied at one, draws over to the left side as fans having a good time. Puck over in the right corner as we're back to live action. Sharp angled shot by Pfizer from the right side, saved by Perry. As Allen's Colton Sossman will throw it to the far side. Grizzlies left wing shot goes wide. Seko skates after it in the corner. Allen moves it ahead to center as Grizz over to the left gets to Dylan Fitz who dumps it in as it goes back to Allen as Chris Mullary behind his own net gets tripped up by Sekos. He's now on two knees. Puck goes back to Pfizer as Sekos over in the corner, and now it goes to Pfizer. Now Allen takes the puck. They'll cross center ice as Colton Hargrove will skate in. Right wing shot goes wide. Darren Pfizer crosses center ice. He'll dump it in as we're three and a half minutes into the third period, and we're tied at one. As Allen dumps it in, Aaron Thoe chasing after it. Cameron right in the area. As the puck goes back over to Utah, as Bryson Martin out to center ice, as he gets poked away and delayed offside, taken by Aaron Thoe in the Grizzlies zone. He'll move it ahead as it's out to center ice. Grizzlies cross center. Utah gains the line. Set goes over to Cameron Wright. He'll take a shot that goes wide. As Utah, Aaron Thoe over in the corner, trying to locate the puck. He battles with Eric Williams. Thoe gets it. He played with Norfolk with Eric Williams for a game this season or maybe even a few games as Thoe was a member of Norfolk for a few weeks before getting traded to the Grizzlies. As over to the far side, about four and a half minutes into the third period, we're tied at one. Allen moves it out to center ice and deep into the Grizzlies zone. Arm is raised by the linesman, and icing is called on Allen with 15-34 left in the third. Guy, it looks like the Grizzlies need to find a way to get momentum back in this game. Yeah, they do, Tyson. And uh, Really, for the first 40 minutes, the Grizzlies had the momentum, but that goal really seems to have sucked the life out of them. They need to find a way uh, to just get possession back, establish the forecheck once again. 
Draws going to be in the right circle. St. Patrick's Day. Everybody's got a St. Patrick's Day themed. It looks like wardrobe over in Allen. A lot of people wearing green over in a place where they normally wear red. Utah wins the draw. They'll bounce it off an American as the Americans will skate out to neutralize. Now the Grizzlies get a bank of their blue line. Utah skates from left to right here in the third period as McCallchuck, right wing, gains the blue line, spins it along the wall. Cameron right behind the net, battles with Massacott as goes to Roby Doe. He battles in the far corner as Jared Power wearing number 20 as he gets hit by Massacott. Now Jamison takes the puck, tries to throw it up top, and it looks like the flex off of, Mc- of Roby Doe's stick and goes out of play. As looked like Jared Power was trying to throw it up top to the newest Grizzly, Jacob Semick, who got an assist in the Terran Pfizer goal, 216 into the second period. Allen scored early in the third as Grant Ebert, 141 in, got his seventh of the year. Fournier and Chris Mullary with the assists. Both teams have taken one shot here so far in the third period. If you're talking about the award for the best beard in the league, Colton Sossman had to be right up there. The defenseman for Allen wearing number 23. Sossman gets the puck, he'll move it ahead. Allen crosses center, left wing pass to Crone. Crone skates towards the corner, he'll take a lefty shot. Saved by Miner. Trent holds on. 14.53 left in the third. We're tied at one. By the big thing here, you know, you think about Bear having Allen's only goal. Allen hasn't really gotten much from their for sure game. That's what they call him. F-O-U-R. Sure gang. Although I think we can come up with a better nickname. What do you call him? The Fantabulous Four? Something like that. Fantastic Four? Something like that I think would work. Hargrove will take the draw against Zach Sekos. Hargrove wins the faceoff shot and it goes wide. As Dylan Fitz moves it ahead, it goes out to center ice. Utah gathers it. Taron Pfizer skates down the middle. He looks to center at the seconds to take a shot. On it goes wide. Unfortunately, we're looking at frame by frame as the pass didn't connect. It goes out to the Allen blue line. Americans back in their own zone. Left wing pass to Crone. Now down the middle for Hargrove. He'll gain the, ver- the line and veer off to the right. Hargrove gets hit by Fitz. Fitz will... Clear it out to center. Now Fitz looking for the puck. He gets it in the right side. Great effort by Dylan Fitz. He dumps it to the corner as he knocks down an Allen skater. Chris Maleri will cross center ice in the left wing and drive it in as it rolls along the wall. Kobe McCauley to the right side will chip it off his stick and it rolls back to the Grizzlies captain, Connor McDonald. Aaron Tho backhands it into neutral ice. Rolling puck goes into the Allen zone. Eric Williams will toss it off center ice and it goes in back to Cameron Wright. Stick goes flying into the air as the puck is saved by Perry as Wright was taking the shot. Now Wright to the left wing, takes another shot, and it gets blocked. Kobe McCauley flies Cameron Wright out to neutralize on a big hit. Now Jack Combs gains the line as he gets hit by Penner, as Penner will chip it across to Bryson Martin. He moves to the right side, pass connects, looking for Penner right in the area. Penner is a, glides along the boards. Now Wright gets it. I look to center, it kicked off to the skate of Eric Williams. Goes back to Massacott in the near corner. He'll move it ahead six and a half minutes into the third period. We're tied at one. Now the puck goes back to Allen, who, glitz, who glides it out to center ice for Jack Combs. Now back to Massacott, who dumps it in. Allen chases after it, but icing is called on Allen. Grant Bear wanted it waved off, but Connor McDonald won the foot race. 13-14 left in the third. We're tied at one. Draw is going to come back towards Chase Perry. You almost feel like that combination of Pfizer and Secos, who's played a lot together, that might end up getting Utah's second goal and could be the difference in the game. I agree. I really like the way those two have played together. Pfizer's been on a tear. Secos has been really solid for the Grizzlies all season long when he's been in the lineup. Make sure to follow the Grizzlies on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. I'm on Twitter at Tyson on Sports. Crowd of 4,602 over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. Grizzly skate behind the net. McCall check with a wraparound. Shot saved by Perry. Now I throw it up top for Semic. He'll take a left wing shot and it goes wide. As the puck goes to the right corner, though gets tripped up by Jack Combs. As McCall check battles, as the Grizzlies will feed it up top for Shearer. He'll take a lefty shot and it's blocked. McCall check gets it in the left wing. He tried to chip it from one corner to the other and it's picked off by Maleri, who lifts it in the air. It bounces in the Grizzly zone. Jacob Semick chases after it. He gets it in the near corner. He'll tap it off the glass. It goes over the head of Grant Bear, but the whistle blows. 1240 is left in the third period. And it looks like we'll have a timeout on the ice. We're back in one minute as we're tied at one on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Maverick's new Bean to Cup machines always deliver a freshly ground cup of coffee on demand so you can enjoy any of our premium roasts at their best, day or night, hot or ice. Enjoy a fresh cup today.
tied at one. 12.40 is left in the third period. Darren Pfizer scored 216 into the second period. Grant Bear found the back of the net 141, and he made a nice move getting around two or three Grizzlies. Fournier and Maleri with the assists. Guy, it's anybody's hockey game right now. Yeah, Tyson, it is. And I mentioned before that a lower scoring affair would benefit the Grizzlies. I still think it does. Uh, Allen's for sure gang has really been quiet tonight, but the Grizzlies have proven that any guy in their lineup can score. I'll take that over a fantastic four. Now we'll see who ends up getting the game winner. Wouldn't be surprised if it's Cameron Wright, who leads the league with eight game-winning goals this season. Seckos take the face off against Hargrove, and it's won by Utah. They're back to live action as Tarrant Pfizer gains the line on the right side, spins along the boards, fits in the corner. Uh, Sorry, pass to Seckos, lefty shot, and it goes wide as McDonald looks to center it. A bouncing puck in front of the net is taken by Sossaman. He'll glide it out to center ice. Grizzlies dump it back in. That's why the screen was working well during the timeout. Now it's not so much. Maleri throws to the near side for Hargrove. As he'll gain new tries, get over to Crone, who gains the line. Crone back around the wall. Seckos in the area as Allen feeds it back around. Crone gets hit by Penner. Penner, the Grizzlies' Iron Man, pushes Crone. As now the puck glides towards the point. Hargrove gets he skates towards his right. Hargrove now in the slot. He'll take a lefty shot and it goes wide. An American gets hit in the back ball in front of the Utah's net. Taken by Taron Pfizer, gains center ice and dumps it in. 11.45 and counting left in the third. We're tied at one. As Chris Maleri will glide it out to center ice. Puck ricochets off the boards. Goes back to Utah as Semek across to Martin, who moves it ahead. Grizzlies still in their own zone. Now they get it out to center ice. Raby gets around an Allen skater across the center ice. He collides with Eric Williams and loses the puck. Massacott, right wing pass as Allen gains the line. Liam Finley will throw it off the left corner boards as... Martin throws it across to Semek, who glides it out to center ice for Cameron Wright. Wright skates towards the right circle as he'll ricochet to Raby, who gets bounced off the boards by Massacott. Jack Combs will feed it around as it goes behind Allen's net as the American skating from right to left. 11 minutes left in the third. Will ice the puck. Does the whistle blow? No, it doesn't. Jack Combs to the left side out there around Bryson Martin. Raby delivers a hit. Combs keeps his feet as the puck squirts towards center ice, taken by Cameron Wright. He'll cross center and dump it in as Perry chases after it. Dalton Galley in a collision with Cameron Wright as the net gets dislodged and the whistle blows with 10.44 left in the third. Galley having some words with Cameron Wright as the drive, I believe, is going to be in the Allen zone. And now it looks like Wright with some words with another American as the draw is going to be, I believe, in the near circle. As Cameron Wright was near the Allen, uh, well, it looks like they're going to show a different part of the play. Well, that was the best replay we've seen all night. Kobe McCauley will skate towards the bench area. Very informative, that replay. Showed us a lot of good stuff. McCauley having some words towards the Grizzlies bench. 10.44 left in the third. We're tied at one. Looks like the draw is going to be at neutralize. We'll skate five on five. Cameron Wright playing a physical game. As McCauley... He's doing some more chirping towards the Grizzlies bench. Draw one by the Americans. Dalton Galley will throw it across. It ricochets off the boards. Allen moves it ahead, but it's the Grizzlies at center ice that gets it. As Connor McDonald will tap it off the wall. As Galley moves it out to center ice, retaken by the Grizzlies. As Aaron Tho crosses center ice and dumps it in. Bouncing puck off the right wing corner. As Allen battles. As McCallchuck couldn't handle it. Gagnon skates around his net. He'll move it out to center ice. Tho picks it off. Right wing pass to Jamison, who skates towards the right circle. Jamison surveys, sharp angled shot, bounced off a galley stick and flies towards the left corner. As Grizzlies get tripped up in the corner, throw in the area. Now Jamison skates around the net. Jamison behind the net, tries to feed it out in front. Shot saved by Perry. Rebound goes out to Allen. Americans have a breakaway. As they skate down the middle, Fournier with a righty shot saved by, by Miner. Rebound backhand shot saved by Miner again. That one was taken by Bear. As the Americans skate towards their left. As they'll take a righty shot in the high slot. It's blocked by Tho. Tho, as the puck, and he's kind of pinned the puck on his knees, on two knees. Now it's taken by Jamison. Jamison will carry it out to center ice. He'll backhand it in as Jamison gets hit by Grant Bear. Allen gathers it as Dalton Galley skates along the near side. Nine and a half minutes left in the third. We're tied at one. As Malari crosses center ice, he'll skate towards his right. Now he gains the line and loses the puck. 
Now it goes back to Allen as Justin Young now loses it. And it goes to the Grizzlies at center ice. Pfizer rink wide pass to Fitz. Fitz in the left circle, gets around Saucerman. I tried to feather it out in front. Nobody was cutting towards the net. Goes back to Fitz on the right side as he skates towards the point. He'll spin it around. It goes past Sekos and over to Pfizer. He gets hit as the Americans gather it. Colton uh, Hargrove will throw it across. And it goes to Hank Crone. Crone skates towards the left circle. He'll drift it across. Nobody was home for Allen. As the Americans get in the right point as they throw it back to the left side. Goes to Hargrove. Hargrove fires towards the net. It goes wide. Now to the right side for Maleri. He'll get it to the corner. Crone spins it around. This goes back to Hargrove. He collides with James Shearer. Looked like Shearer pulled the chair on him as it goes back to the Allen zone. Sossaman will throw it back to his defensive partner. As the Americans skate around the net, it's Chris Maleri, who's now behind Allen's net as there's 8.25 and counting left in the third. We're tied at one. Maleri chips it ahead as it goes to McCauley. As Kobe McCauley crosses center ice, he gets around Penner. Now McCauley to the left circle, take a lefty shot. Saved by Minor. Trent holds on, 8.14 left, and McCauley with a push of Cameron Wright out in front of the crease. Well, it could have been a penalty there on McCauley if the referee wanted to. As McCauley having some words with Cameron Wright. You saw Kobe McCauley a few years ago without, with Idaho get a Gordie Howe hat trick, and he completed it with a third-period fight against Jack Jenkins. Timeout on the ice, 8.14 left in the third. We're back in one minute on the Grizzlies Hockey Network. Tied at one. Taron Pfizer scored 216 in his team leading 23rd of the year. It was a power play goal. Allen answered back 141 into the third as Grant Abair got a seventh of the year. Fournier and Maleri with the assist. On Utah's goal, Jacob Semek got his first point of, as a Grizzly and first point professionally. He had nine assists in 39 games of Arizona State earlier this season. And Dakota Raby picked up his 24th assist of the season. He's now got a point in 12 of his last 14. Guy, it's anybody's game here. It is, Tyson, but I really like the way the Grizzlies responded after the Allen goal. Allen scores early, and you got to think that there was a momentum shift there, but the Grizzlies killed it. Uh, they really settled into the game, and we're still tied. Allen wins the faceoff, and the offense is owners are back to live action. Americans over to the left wing. Look for Massacott. Grizzlies will clear it out. And it's chasing after it's Liam Finley. He gets it, and icing is called on the Grizzlies as the whistle blows with 8-0-1 left in the third. Allen has outshot Utah 6-4 to four in the third period. The Americans have a 29-25 to 25 edge. Utah had 51 shots last night as Allen won 7-4. to four. Despite the victory, Allen wasn't happy with their defensive effort. They're looking to come strong today. It looks like they have put together a better defensive effort tonight. Allen wins the faceoff. They're in the offensive zone as Jack Combs behind the net loses it as James Shearer spins along the near wall. As Puck kind of gets stuck there along the boards as Cameron Wright will lift it out to center ice. Massacott feeds it across as everybody stops skating. 7.47 left in the third. And looks like the draw is going to come back towards the American zone. It looks like it's going to be uh, an offensive zone draw for the Grizzlies with 7.47 left in the third. As Allen wearing their green jerseys, and it's kind of interesting to see the red helmets, red gloves. Very much a Christmas theme here in the month of March. So we're skating five on five, I believe. Penner will take the draw against Kobe McCauley. Grizzlies win the faceoff. Right wing, McDonald with a shot that goes wide. He hits out to the left wing, throws it to Cameron right. I tried to chip it out in front. It bounced off a Perry stick. As Raby feeds it back to the near corner, Allen gathers it. They try to clear it out. It bounced off a McDonald. Now Raby down the middle, feeds to the left side. Sure, with a one-timer, and it's blocked. As it goes back to Penner. He's to the left side trying to kick it ahead, and it rolls back to the left point. Right fires towards the net. Righty shot goes wide. Raby gets it up top, but it's Allen that picks it off. Jack Combs crosses center ice. He'll bounce the puck to the right side. Finley gathers it. Finley's got great hands to go along with speed. Right wing shot saved by Miner. As rebound goes out to the far side, Cameron Wright gets held up by Finley. 
As Grizzlies behind their net, fans wanted a penalty on right. As James Shearer has the puck behind Trent Miner. Has played a good game, both Shearer and Miner. As Shearer glides it to the far side, Grizzlies will carry it out to center ice before they lose it. It bounced off uh, Fournier. Fournier, the former Wichita Thunder skater, over to Robido. Take a righty shot. Glove saved by Miner. 6.46 left in the third, and Trent Bell's his team out after the Grizzlies turned it over. And I got to say that Trent Miner's been outstanding tonight, but that's the way it's been for him over the last couple months. He's been spectacular. He's been really solid, Tyson, and another solid save there. They got to think back to a couple minutes ago where we had really two big, great saves that really kept the Grizzlies in this game. Second of a three-game series. The series finale will be on Sunday afternoon. 12.50 pregame show, 105 faceoff. As Utah looking to defeat Allen for the first time in a while. As Grizzlies win the draw, and they'll fling it all the way deep in the Allen zone. Looks like icing's called on the Grizzlies. I think the Grizzlies' last win was that crazy game that started an hour late. There was a big snowstorm. Half the Americans didn't get there on time. I think it was February 22nd against Allen when Utah got a victory. And it was a close one, but Utah's done well in close games. This one looks like it's going to be close as well. In fact, you think about games decided by one or two goals this season. The Grizzlies have a record of 19-6-3. and three. So Grizzlies won the close ones in one-goal games. They've got a record of 12-3-3. Three and three. And think about the playoff picture. The Grizzlies are tied with Allen and Wichita for third place in the Mountain Division. A big part of that is the Grizzlies winning the close games. Allen wins a face-off puck deep in the Grizzlies zone. Aaron Thoe along the near side is retired at one. A little more than six minutes left in regulation. Grizzlies rink wide pass connects to McCallchuck. He'll skate towards the right circle, take a righty shot, saved by Perry, and the puck deflects out of play off the protective netting. 6 10 left in the third. We got another close game, and guy, the Grizzlies like they have time and time again this year. Can they find a way to pick up a win here? Well, Tyson, certainly you mentioned the Grizzlies playing well in one goal games, and that's exactly what you want to see from a team making a push for the playoffs, but that's just what playoff teams do. Playoff teams win those close games. And the Grizzlies tonight have proven that they can play like a playoff team. Toronto's going to be in the near circle of the Allen zone. It's anybody's hockey game now as Zach Seckos will take the draw against Colton Hargrove. Face off won by the Grizzlies. Fies with a shot and it's blocked. And it looks like a ricocheted off an American as the whistle blows. As it looks like the Pfizer shot somehow hit Allen up high. I couldn't quite tell who that was. They skeet towards the bench. And it looks like it's Kobe McCauley. No, it's Justin Young, Young 28. Uh, looked like he was shaking up a little bit as he got hit up high as Pfizer was looking for a shot from the right wing. Young will skate to the bench. Looks like he's okay. 6.07 is left in the third as Justin Young will get a stick back. Obviously, he's a hockey player. He'll return to the game. Unfortunately, we haven't seen Cam Strong back in. Hopefully, the injury that he sustained in the second period isn't too serious. As the Americans win the faceoff, they throw it to Crone, who's surrounded by three Grizzlies. Crone gains the line, left point, stops and rolls it around the wall. As Allen falls down, as the, it looks like the ice is playing tricks in the third period, Dylan, Dylan Fitz delivers a hit on Sossman. Fitz will clear it out to center. Hargrove, left wing, wraps it around the boards. It hits a stanchion, rolls to the right circle, gathered by Sekos. As Sekos will lift it high into the air, goes to Pfizer at center ice in the right wing. He'll chip it across to Fitz. Fits to the left side, but everybody stops skating. As it looks like the Grizzlies are called for offside with 5.33 left in the third. We'll find out how this one ends when we come back in one minute as it's the Grizzlies won and the Americans won. This is Utah Grizzlies Hockey presented by Rio Tinto Kennecott. If you're out driving and something happens to your car, truck, or even wheelchair, and you end up stuck at a rail crossing, it's going to be okay. Don't panic. Here's what you do. Get out if you can. And look for this blue sign on the metal pole. Call the number on the blue sign, and when they answer, tell them the crossing number. The number is right here. This tells them the exact location of the crossing. This is the fastest way to get trains stopped before coming through the crossing. Look for the blue. It helps you. I live for my next goal. Whether it's another pick six or another step forward in life, I wouldn't be who I am without the drive to reach it. And I wouldn't be where I am without my team. Everyone on and off the field who supports me and believes in my dreams as much as I do. Whatever your goals are, surround yourself with people who are going to help you reach toward them. Like my friends at America First and see where life takes you. Now we're tied at one with 533 left in the third period. 
Well, I smoke him if he got him. It looks like we got a barn burner over at Credit Union of Texas Event Center. Middle game of a three-game set. Allen won 7-4 to four last night. The Grizzlies are 5-1 and one in the month of March. As Allen wins the draws, Hank Crone crosses the blue line and dumps it in from the right wing. Well, it looks like it's going to be a penalty on Utah as they delivered a big hit behind Trent Miner's net as Connor McDonald boarded Aiden Brown. Brown's slow to get to his feet. McDonald isn't even arguing the call. He smiles. He's got kind of a gap in his tooth uh, there on the, the top side. McDonald it looks like he's going to get two minutes for boarding, and Allen's going to get a third-period power play with 523 left in the third. Even McDonald's not arguing that one as the penalty of two minutes for boarding is he hit Aiden Brown behind Utah's net. Tough break for the Grizzlies, Tyson. Good call. Uh, it's just an unfortunate time to take that penalty for Connor McDonald. But the good news is, is that the UDK Grizzlies uh, penalty kill has been fantastic all night long. They've stopped everything that Allen's thrown at him. Yeah, it's a f- perfect five for five so far, the Grizzlies penalty kill. As Allen's on the power play, the Americans this season, 23.9% on the man advantage. Colton Hargrove will take the draw. He's got Hank Crone to his left, and I think Jack Combs to his right. Grizzlies win the draw. They couldn't clear it out. Crone will skate towards the right side from behind the net. Now up top for Finley. Across to Mullary. He's in the high slot. And so throw it to the right side as Hargrove. We're in the C over to Mullary. Back to Crone on the left side. Drops it back off for Mullary. Back to Hargrove. Over to Mullary. Back to Hargrove on the right side. Hargrove fakes a shot. Throws it to Mullary. He'll drift it over to the left side for Crone. Crone with a shimmy shake uh, with the shoulders. Throws it back to Combs, back to Crone, up top for Mullary as Mullary fakes to Crone, skates towards his right, now dishes over to Hargrove. Now across to Crone, he's to the left side, take like a lefty shot, on it goes wide. Crone leads the league in goals, but didn't get one there. As Mullary over to Hargrove, he's in the right point, gets around, fits. Hargrove skates towards the right circle, now stops in the corner. He'll button hook and throw it to Mullary, back over to Finley on the left side. Finley just outside the circle, over to the goal line for Crone, back to Finley. Finley, shimmy shakes, will throw it over to Hargrove. Now he looks to center it to Crom. Pass goes wide, and, fin- and Finley will skate towards the near corner to get it. Now behind the net for Combs. Back to Hargrove. He'll take a lefty shot, and it's blocked. Puck rolls towards Mullary. 48 seconds left in the power play. Hargrove throws to the far side. Now back to Hargrove. He fakes the shot, gets to Mullary. Now to the left side for Finley. Finley dancing around in the left circle. Finley throws to Combs. Combs along the near wing boards. He'll now skate to his right. Now up top for Mullary. Back to Finley, who fakes a shot. Now drifted over to the near goal line. In the corner, Hank Crone gets pushed by Semek as the puck rolls around. Hargrove collides with Jamison as Hargrove on the far goal line. Now behind the net. He'll throw it up top. Mullary and the high slot. Throws it back to the right side for Hargrove. Across to Finley. Ten seconds left in the power play. Finley up top for Mullary. Back to the right side for Hargrove. One-timer, and it goes wide. Finley to the left side. And he'll throw it to Hargrove. One-timer saved by Miner. As Combs chips it out in front of the net, Semic boxes out. As McDonald's out of the box, it's a UDK successful penalty kill. Utah disaster cleanup. As Crone throws it to Finley down the middle. Take a righty shot, and it's blocked. As James Shearer gets it, he'll pitch fork it out to center ice, but it's picked off by Hargrove as he keeps it in the Grizzlies zone. Hargrove skates towards the corner. I try to center it. Now it goes to the right side. As Combs with a shot that goes wide, Mullary back to Finley, left wing, shot saved by Miner, rebound out in front, Allen gets tripped up as they're looking to capitalize on a shot that goes wide, puck goes back to Finley in the left point, he'll fire towards Miner, and Trent gets it on two hops of the ice, 244 left in the third period, boy, Allen had the puck, it seemed like for the entire two-minute power play, but they didn't score, as we're still tied to one, great penalty kill by the Grizzlies. Unbelievable penalty kill there for the Grizzlies. Another successful Utah disaster cleanup penalty kill. They've been excellent so far in this game. Now six for six. And really, Tyson, the Grizzlies just weathered the storm. You mentioned Allen had full possession throughout that whole power play. And the Grizzlies were able to get sticks on pucks, really just doing a great job of keeping the puck out of their own net. 244 left in the third. Utah and Allen has played one game past regulation that I can remember. That was in November. And that was a game where Connor McDonald got the overtime game winner. Draws going to be in the near circle of the Grizzlies zone. Penner will take it against Grant Abair, who has Allen's goal tonight. Utah wins the draw. Tyron Pfizer carries it across center ice. Now he crosses over the blue line, over in the right corner. Pfizer skates around the net. He's now on the left side, centers it over to Penner. He gets poked away. Massacott will ricochet off the glass. It goes high into the air, bounces at center ice. 
Pfizer ricochets and off the boards. It goes to Massacon who crosses the center red line and spins along the wall as Tho collides. Now Tho collides with Robido, but Tho throws it from one corner to the other for Martin. Martin gains center ice, gets around a bear. Martin with good speed gets it poked away by Combs. Now it rolls back to Massacon behind Allen's net. He skates towards the corner. Now the Americans. Robido loses it right in the area. Now it goes back to Robido as he battles with Cameron Wright. Wright tries to get the puck back. McCauley drifts it back to Robido. Now back to Eric Williams. He rolls it around to Massacon, who will drift it off the near wing boards. Goes deep in the Grizzlies zone. Miner cuts it off just in front of the goal line in the near side. He'll get it to Connor McDonald. 145 and counting left in the third. We're tied at one. McDonald crosses center ice and he'll dump it to the right corner as the puck glides along the wall. Maleri skates towards the far corner of the Allen zone. He turns it over. Raby off the wall to the right side. He couldn't crowd the bouncing puck as goes back to McDonald. Right wing shot saved by Perry. Rebound goes out to Fitz on the left side. He's near the corner. Back behind the net to Raby. Raby surveys. Now he skates towards the right corner. Stops. He tries to get around Colton Sossman. Sossman gets Raby off balance. Now it goes to Combs, who tried to clear it out. McDonald keeps it in. Now it bounces off of Malari stick, and it goes to center ice. Kobe McCauley skates down the middle. Left wing pass to Combs. Combs backhand shot, saved by Miner. And the puck goes to the right side. Finley tries to get it. Utah clears it out. Oh, no. I think it's going to be delay of game on Dakota Raby. As he tried to lift the puck and carry it out of the zone, and instead he gave a fan a souvenir. 103 left in the third. Allen certainly wanted to delay a game penalty, and one's going to be called. Raby gets two minutes for giving a fan a souvenir from his own zone. And so Allen is going to be on the power play for the final minute, three seconds of regulation, and the first 57 seconds of overtime if the Grizzlies are able to kill the rest of regulation off. So Raby just tried to clear the puck out, and unfortunately for him, he just lifted it out of play. Somebody has used their timeout. I don't know if it's Utah or Allen. It's probably Allen, but it looks like one of the teams has used their 30-second timeout. As we're tied at one, 103 is left in the third period, and Allen's going to be on the power play looking to win it. Well, Tyson, it's St. Patrick's Day, and unfortunately, luck was not on the side of Dakota Raby. Just a really unfortunate play there. Uh, but the Grizzlies, uh, you know, if you believe in the uh, announcer jinx, I'm not going to say anything. All I'm going to say is the, power, the penalty kill has been good, <laughs> and I'll leave it at that. That has been a good penalty kill here so far. Allen's been very patient with our approach. We saw it was very similar to their first period, Power play late in the first period uh, when they scored a goal one second after or after the power play ended. They're not afraid to just work the puck around and find the open shooter. They're not afraid to work the puck around and not take a shot for 40 seconds, hearing it from their fans yelling, shoot, shoot. Allen's going to be very patient with their approach here, and they're going to find the open guy. Uh, and that's exactly what they want to do. That's the identity of their power play. They, like you mentioned they're not scared to work the puck around. They will wait until they find the shot that they want to take. Draw's going to be in the near circle. We're tied at one. As the faceoff goes towards the end boards, Crone battles with Martin. Now Shearer gets it, whips it around the wall. It's cut off in the right point. Allen in the offensive zone. Chris Maleri gets it to the right side for Hargrove. Now back to the far goal line. Now back to Hargrove. Up top for Maleri. He'll get it across to Finley, who fakes a shot. Finley gets the puck over to Maleri. He'll take a lefty shot. And it goes wide on a one-timer. Hargrove back up top for Maleri, who bobbles it for a second but keeps it in the zone. Maleri throws to the right corner. 35 seconds left in regulation. Now Maleri throws to the left side for, for Finley. One-timer, and it goes wide. The puck exits the zone. Maleri, 26 seconds left in regulation. Gets to Finley. Back around. We're tied at one as Allen gets over to Maleri. Right wing pass. Allen's still in their own zone. Less than 20 seconds left. Finley crosses center ice. Left wing to Combs. Combs skates along the near wing board. Skates towards the corner. Gets up top. It goes past Hargrove. Grizzlies chase after it. Pfizer gets it. Eight seconds left. Pfizer skates to the left circle. Centers it to the second one timer, and it goes wide. Now the Grizzlies chip it out in front. Shot saved by Perry. And that does it for regulation as the Grizzlies had a good chance. They're shorthanded as Pfizer tried to find Seco's cross ice to the right. Seco's with a one-timer. Didn't get much on it. Then Utah tried to feed it out in front. They got a shot off, and Perry made the save. Boy, a wild end to regulation as both teams will get a standing point tonight. Remember, Allen's going to be on the power play the first 57 seconds of overtime. So we'll skate four on three to start overtime with Allen on the power play. If the Grizzlies are successful with the penalty kill, McDonald will come out of the box and we'll skate four on four until the next whistle. But, Guy, what a crazy sequence there in the final minute. Oh, man, Tyson, that was fantastic. Almost gave me a heart attack. What great action from end to end in the Grizzlies. 
almost had a chance to win it. Ter uh, Terran Pfizer made a great cross crease pass to Secos, and he just didn't get enough on it. The sight was off, and he missed the target, but the Grizzlies fought until the end of regulation. Both teams have earned a standing point tonight. That's not nothing. Grizzlies would like to get two standings points, and it looks like Kansas City is going to beat Wichita, so the Mavericks will have 62 points after tonight. And Utah and Allen gets at least 60, but somebody's going to come away with 61 points and be in third place by themselves in the Mountain Division. Well, who's going to be that threat in overtime? The Grizzlies, I would imagine Pfizer, Secos, Wright are going to be contributors in overtime. You know, usually both teams will go with two defensemen or two forwards, one defenseman. But, you know, Allen's going to be on the power play, four on three, the first 57 seconds. I got to imagine uh, they're big guns, Crumb, Combs, Hargrove. And you know, and 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 Combs, you know, Combs, Chrome, Hargrove, and and the other guy, Finley. <laughs> Finley. <laughs> I'm sure those four guys are going to contribute there. It could be all four forwards, if not three of the four, that are going to be on the ice to start overtime. Yeah, I have to imagine that that would be the case, and I would imagine also that Allen would want to play a possession style game. We've seen that. Uh, from them on their power play and they're on the power play right now I got to figure that they'll try and work the puck around in the grizzly zone as much as they can waiting for that perfect opportunity to take that shot you mentioned they're very methodical with the way that they do things I expect that to be the case here we've started playing overtime puck deep in the Allen zone as the Grizzlies won the face off and dumped it in Allen skating from left to right in overtime as both teams switch sides Grizzlies skating from right to left Allen crosses center ice with the puck as Liam Finley, four-on-three power play for Allen, gets to Jack Combs in the right point. He'll get it up top. Now to Hargrove on the right side. Over to Combs in the near goal line. Combs battles in the corner, throws it back up top for Hargrove. Hargrove feeds it to his left, and that's Crone. All four of the top scorers for Allen are on the ice. Crone over to Hargrove. One-timer, saved by Miner. Puck still in play. Grizzlies clear it out. 15 seconds left in the power play. Perry in front of the crease. Outlets it to Crone. Crone crosses center ice. He leads the league in points and goals. Crone, who was the number one star last night. Four seconds left in the power play over to Combs. Is out of the box to Dakota Raby. We're skating four on four until the next whistle. Hargrove on the right side. Over to Crone. To Crone. Back to Finley. He's behind the net. He skates towards the right side as he gets a screen from Combs. Up top for Hargrove. He'll get it over to Finley. Back to Hargrove on the right side. Hargrove skates towards his left. He's now in the high slot. Right wing pass to Saucerman. Now across to Hargrove. Now back to Finley. He's in the left side. We're tied at one in overtime. Finley will back it out to neutralize. McDonald will come off. Saucerman in the right wing. He'll skate towards a circle, but it looks like Allen is called for offside. 531 left in overtime, so we'll go back to skating three on three. And the draw is going to be at neutral ice. Good penalty kill by the Grizzlies. Allen worked the puck around. I think Miner made one big pad save there. Yeah, big penalty kill there for the Grizzlies. And when we saw it, Allen tried to be methodical with their approach, really moved the puck around. And the Grizzlies just did not give them that shooting lane that they wanted. Great penalty kill. 531 left in overtime. Trent Miner's been outstanding in net, just allowing the one goal to Grant Abair. Got around three Grizzlies and kind of a highlight type of play. So we're going to go back to skating five on three for the first time in overtime. Zach Sekos will take the draw, as looks like Terran Pfizer's out there as well. Sekos wins it, and he gets over to Bryson Martin, who's the one defenseman on the ice. Martin now behind Trent Miner's net. The Grizzlies skate from right to left, as Martin will throw it to the nearest side for Sekos. He'll gain neutral ice as Sekos crosses center, and he'll veer off to the right. Sekos gains the line as he stops on the right side, gets it across to Pfizer. Pfizer to the left, back to Sekos as he hangs around the right side, as now backing out to neutralize himself. Seco's now in the Grizzly zone, chips it across to Martin. Bryson Martin, the former third-round draft pick of the Buffalo Sabres. This is eighth different ECHL team. Martin behind the net, and now he'll glide it over to Fizer on the far side. Gleiser will skate out to center ice. He'll move it ahead for Seco's, and the puck goes deep in the Allen zone. Seco's gets it. He's over in the corner, gets double teamed. McCauley pokes it away. Colby McCauley gets the puck. He'll cross center ice. He'll skate in from the left wing. McCauley skates towards the left circle. Take a lefty shot. Saved by Miner. McCauley gets it back. He'll throw it to the left side as Allen doing a spin move over in the left circle. Sossaman throws it up top for Abear. Abear has Allen's only goal tonight. He'll look to center. Puck bounced off a stick, and Miner covers up in the crease. As Abear was in the left side, tried to center it to McCauley, but Trent Miner covers up with 423 left in overtime. Well, Allen playing that controlling style, but they just couldn't get any, any that centering pass through. 
Tyson. Grizzlies playing tight defense here tonight, but really the difference has been Trent Miner. He's been phenomenal throughout the course of this game. We're tied at one in overtime. Both teams get one standing point. Who gets that second one? As draws going to be over in the left circle. Hargrove will take the face off against Keaton Jamison. Cameron Wright's out there along with James Shearer. Shearer gets the puck after Jamison won the face off. Now to Cameron Wright behind Utah's net. Wright's got eight game winning goals this season. That leads the league, including one in overtime. He'll throw it to the right side as the Grizzlies will cross center. Jamison with the right wing pass to Wright off the boards. Jamison around the net. He's uh, right around the net. Jamison out in front. Wright gets over to Shearer. Shearer will back it out to neutralize. Grizzlies will reset. As Wright drops it off for Jamison at center ice. Jamison back to Wright. Wright skates down the middle. Take a righty shot that goes wide as he tried to go glove side on Perry. Jamison up top for Shearer, wearing an A on his sweater. Back to Cameron Wright in the left side. Wright will skate towards his right, fire towards the net, and it goes wide as it bounced off the end boards on two hops. Colton Hargrove gets it halfway through overtime. He'll nudge it ahead for Maleri. Back to Hargrove, who gains center ice from the left wing. Hargrove gains the line as he'll skate to the corner as he's being shadowed by Raby. Hargrove up top for Hank Chrome. Chrome back to Hargrove in the left point. He'll drift it across as it's to the right side for Maleri. He'll glide it back towards Hargrove in the right point. Hargrove feeds it across to Chrome as he'll skate towards the left side. Utah trips him up. Is a call being made? Yes, it is. Connor McDonald gets two minutes for tripping with 3.08 left in overtime, and Allen's going to get a two-minute power play. McDonald can't believe it, although he's not arguing the call, just like he didn't argue the call in the third period. But the Grizzlies' captain's going to serve two minutes. And Allen, with the way they worked the puck around, boy, they killed one penalty late in regulation and into overtime. They're going to have to do it again. Yeah, Tyson, this is a tough break here for the Grizzlies. I'm kind of surprised that call was made at this point in the game. Uh, I was hoping maybe we get a replay to really see if that was the right call. I can't really say for sure. But critical moment here for the Grizzlies. We're going to have to find a way to kill off another penalty. Now, McDonald didn't think it was a bad call, or else he would have really argued the case. As, yeah, they do show a replay, and it does look like a trip on McDonald. Allen's on the power play for two minutes, 3.08 left in overtime. Hargrove will take the draw for Allen against Utah's Zach Sekos. As the draw won by Utah, Bryson Martin, deep in his own zone, will clear it out. As it goes all the way towards Chase Perry to the near side, he'll cut it off before it goes to the goal line. Back to Colton Sossaman. Sossaman around the net. Now he'll drift a left wing pass as the Americans will skate into the offensive zone. Crone over to Sossaman. He'll skate towards his right. Now back to the left as Allen spreads the ice. Hank Crone skates towards the middle. He feeds it to the right side for Hargrove. Now up top for Sossaman. Sossaman fakes a shot. Now gets it to Hargrove. Right wing one timer. Saved by Miner. Grizzlies get the rebound and clear it out. 2.33 left in overtime. Grizzlies will change up skaters. Allen, here in the middle game, they won last night 7-4. to four. As the Americans out to center ice, Hargrove gets it across. Puck bounced off a Hank Crone stick. And the Americans enter the zone as Crone gets it in the left point. Up top for Sossaman. The Beard will get it to the right side for Hargrove. Back to Sossaman. Left wing to Crone. Across to Hargrove. He's all alone. He fires a shot and it goes wide. As rebound goes to Allen. Up top for Sossaman. He'll fake to his right, throw it to the left for Crone. Crone back to Sossaman. Now to Hargrove. One timer, kick save by Miner. Sossaman in the high slot, back to Hargrove. Back to Sossaman. One timer, and it's blocked by Jamison. Left side. Allen gets it back to Sossaman. Now to Hargrove. One timer, and that one's blocked as well. That was blocked as it goes back over to Hargrove. Sure, blocked that last one. As the puck goes back over to Crone. Now to Har Sossaman. Lefty shot. Saved by Miners. That was a one-timer from the left wing. Sossaman with the righty shot. As Allen still with the puck. Hargrove over to Chrome. Back to Hargrove. He'll skate to the right circle. Now back up top for Chrome. He'll get to Sossaman. One-timer and fanned on it. Puck glides along the end boards. Martin, Martin tried to clear it out. Chrome keeps it in. As Chrome to the high slot. Back to Hargrove. One-timer and the puck lifted on him. It stays in play as it glides along the far wing boards. Five seconds left in the power play. McDonald's coming out of the box right now as Car Colton Hargrove will get it to Combs uh, along the far goal line. Puck bounced off a of throw and over to the crease, and Miner covers up. 104 left in overtime. Great penalty kill by the Grizzlies, who just blocked one shot after another. Unbelievable, Tyson. Two difference makers on that penalty kill. Trent Miner, you right, blocked shots. The Grizzlies were blocking everything that Allen threw at him. That was a huge Utah disaster cleanup, successful penalty kill. 
We're back to three-on-three -three skating. 104 left in overtime. If neither team scores in the last minute four of OOT, we'll go to a shootout. Utah was in a shootout last Saturday where they won in the eighth round, and Trent Miner was eight for eight. Miner's been outstanding for the Grizzlies tonight. As a draw, one by Allen, but it goes between the two defensemen up top as Chris Mullary gets it as he's deep in the Allen zone. You can almost say that Allen wants to play for one final shot, a little bit of a basketball theme as Mullary throws to the far side, 50 seconds left in overtime. Allen crosses center. Now they skate over the blue line. Allen skates in, throws a shot on Miner from the left wing. Miner kicks it away as Kobe McCauley will skate back to neutralize with the puck as he'll tap it off the boards on the far side. Now Allen, Liam Finley will move it across as Allen back in their own zone does look like they're playing for one final shot as the Americans cross center ice. Finley skates towards the left side. We'll drop it off for McCauley. He'll take a lefty shot. Glove saved by Miner. Puck still in play as Miner gets over to the near boards for Cameron Wright. 18 seconds left. Grizzlies have the puck. They cross center. Taron Pfizer skates down the middle, gains the line, and stops in the high slot. He'll throw it to the right side for sure. Back up top for Pfizer. Skates towards his left. Now he stops, fires it off the end boards. Five seconds left in overtime. Cameron Wright. He'll get over to the one second left. Can Wright get a shot off and take a shot? Kick saved by Perry. And that will do it for overtime. We'll head to a shootout. Neither team scored. Allen had a power play for two minutes and 57 seconds in overtime. And the Grizzlies with a great penalty kill. When Allen had a full two minutes there after Connor McDonald got two for tripping. And the Grizzlies keep playing. Boy, Allen really had the Grizzlies on their heels. But Trent Miner with one big save after another. There'll be a minimum of three rounds in these shootouts. And then after that, it's each, you know, you go into the fourth and fifth round. Each team's going to have a shot in each of the rounds after that. So it's not necessarily sudden death that somebody gets a goal in the top half, but we'll see. Uh, for the Grizzlies, they had one shootout. It was last Saturday. Trent Miner was outstanding. We'll see if Dakota Raby goes a little bit earlier as he was the one that got Utah's goal last Saturday. Yeah, I'm interested to see uh, what the lineup will look like, look like for Ryan Kanasiewicz throughout the course of the shootouts. Got to imagine Cameron Wright is going to be there at the top of, along with Taron Pfizer. But Trent Miner, I think he's going to be the difference maker in this shootout. You mentioned Allen's for sure, gang. You got to think that they're going to be the first four to go for Allen. Allen outshot Utah 8-2 to two in overtime. Trent Miner has stopped 40 of 41. Chase Perry for Allen has saved 30 of 31. Looks like Allen will be skating from right to left as we see it on Flow Sports. The Americans will shoot first. Liam Finley, who's got 29 goals this season, he'll shoot first for the Americans in his green St. Patrick's-themed jersey with red pants and a red helmet and red gloves. Liam Finley stares down Trent Miner, who stopped 40 of 41. Finley will skate towards the puck. He gets it. He'll drift over to his left. Finley, very patient with his approach. Now he'll skate towards his right. Finley with a shot, and he missed the net. So Finley 0 for 1 in the shootout, and so is the Allen Americans. Who's going to shoot first for Utah? It looked like Finley tried to patiently go glove side, and the first shooter for Utah. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit more than this. It's Zach Sekos. He's got 11 goals this season. This is 26th game. Sekos will take the puck. He'll drift over to his left. As Sekos, like Finley, very patient. Sekos skates down the middle. He'll take a lefty shot. Saved by Perry. So both teams 0 for 1 in the shootout. We'll go to the second round. Perry gets a swig of water. Hank Crone is the second shooter for the Allen Americans. He's got 39 goals this season. That leads the league. Crone will skate towards the puck. And Crone will take it. He'll drift over to the left. As now Crone will skate towards his right. Crone near the blue line. Now he'll skate ahead. Crone with some more speed. He'll take a lefty shot. And he missed the net. Two Americans have missed the net on Trent Miner, and they're 0 for 2. Bottom of the second round. Who's going to shoot for Utah? Looks like it's going to be Taron Pfizer, who leads the club with 23 goals this season. Pfizer will skate towards the puck. He'll take it at center ice. He'll skate down the middle. Now he'll drift over to the right. Pfizer will skate in. Backhand shot on. Didn't get much one off. Uh, didn't get much of one off as Perry just poked it away. Pfizer got a little bit too close to the goaltender on that occasion. And so both teams are 0 for 2. We head into the third round. It's going to be Jack Combs shooting third for Allen. He's got 31 goals this season. Combs takes the puck. He'll skate over to his left. Now Combs will skate towards his right. Backhand shot saved by Miner. Allen is 0 for 3. Utah can win it right here. 
Shooting third for the Grizzlies is Cameron Wright. Wright could win it for Utah. He's got 20 goals this season. I don't think this would count as a game-winning goal, but he leads the league with eight. Wright thinking about his move on Chase Perry as Wright will now skate towards the puck. He takes the puck at center ice. He'll skate towards his left. Now Cameron Wright will skate. He'll take a shot. He scores! Grizzlies win! Grizzlies win! Cameron Wright quiets the crowd as Utah wins 2-1, to one, and there is no doubt about it. As everybody goes to congratulate Trent Miner, who was unbelievable. As Miner stopped 40 of 41 and all three in the shootout. And Cameron Wright comes through for the Grizzlies. Wright was very patient with his approach. Just kind of skated down the middle. Very matter-of-fact shot. They got past Chase Perry. So the Grizzlies get the victory. And they are now ahead of Allen in the standings. Utah's got 61 standings points. They're in third place all by themselves. In the Mountain Division, just one behind Kansas City, who got a 5-2 victory over Wichita. What a sweet victory for the Grizzlies as Cameron Wright gets the shootout game winner. And, Guy, how about Trent Miner? He came through clutch when the Grizzlies needed it the most. Oh, my goodness, Tyson. Without a doubt, Trent Miner playing another fantastic game really kept the Grizzlies in this one. I think back to that sequence of events about midway through the third period. Trent Miner made two fantastic saves. That was the difference maker. He was fantastic all night long. Grizzlies get the middle of the game of the series. That means a Sunday will be the rubber match. 12.50 pregame show, 1 o'clock face-off in the Mountain Time Zone. And Guy and I will be right here in the lobby at Mavericks Center. Post-game show comes up next as Cameron Wright gets the shootout game winner. And Trent Miner came through big for the Grizzlies. Miner should be the number one star. Wright should be the second star. And remember, the second period goal scored by Taron Pfizer was a great effort all around. And the Grizzlies limited that tough-powered, that high-powered Allen offense. Held them to just one goal tonight including eight shots in overtime. Allen had a full two-minute power play. Just a spectacular win for the Grizzlies on the road as they get their, fifth, uh, their 16th road victory of the season. They are now 16-14-3 on the road. Post-game show starts in 30 seconds. Final score, Utah 2, Allen 1 in a shootout. This is Utah Grizzlies hockey. When you pay with the Nitro card at Maverick, you always save 10 cents or more on fuel every gallon, every day. And you could save a whole lot more thanks to Nitro Best Price. Pick up a Nitro card and upgrade your Adventure Club. Well, my blood pressure has been in bad shape for a while now, and that's, this is not going to help. Utah wins 2-1 to one in a shootout as Cameron Wright gets the game winner. How about Grizzmania coming through again? And think about the second shootout for the Grizzlies in six days. Last Saturday, Trent Miner stopped all eight in the shootout before Dakota Raby got the game winner. Today, didn't have to take eight shots as Cameron Wright came through in round three. You talk about clutch performer, right, who leads the league with eight game-winning goals. It's not going to officially be counted as a game-winner in the stat sheet, but it is a game-winner nonetheless as he got the shootout game-winner, and Cameron Wright came through. And really for the Grizzlies, it's their big guns. Taron Pfizer scoring a second-period goal, Zach Seckos winning face-offs and blocking shots and doing a lot of, uh, a lot of things for the Grizzlies, playing a good all-around game. And Cameron Wright, what can you say about him? He's a clutch performer. And he displays it again. But I think back to overtime, Guy, the Grizzlies really were shorthanded for what? The first 57 seconds of the of the overtime session. Then Cameron, then Connor McDonald got a tripping minor, 352 in, and Allen had a full two-minute power play, four on three. You know, Allen was patient with our approach, but when they had looks, the Grizzlies blocked shots. Miner made a couple pad saves. And overall, just, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, that's what really makes this win so much fun. It wasn't necessarily offensively where the Grizzlies won the game. It was defense and Trent Miner coming up big. And if the Grizzlies want to have success late in the regular season, and if they want to have success in the playoffs, this is the type of game you're going to have to win. You know, the type of atmosphere and really defensively, that's the kind of effort you're going to have to have if you want to beat teams like the Allen Americans come playoff time. And because of that, not only is it two point two standings points well earned, but I think it's one of those that could be an indication of where the Grizzlies are headed here in the final month of the regular season. I couldn't agree more, Tyson. And in last night's loss, uh, a high-scoring affair, I said that in a, a high-scoring shootout, the Grizzlies are not going to beat the Americans. And most teams aren't. 
But tonight, the Grizzlies played tight defense, solid penalty kill. The Grizzlies won the special teams battle. Yes, the Grizzlies went one for seven on the power play, but Allen, 0 for 8. That was the difference maker here in tonight's game. Solid all-around effort for the Grizzlies. Low-scoring affair, totally benefited Utah. What, what a statement win for the Grizzlies. Yeah, as you mentioned, the special teams, one for seven on the power play. Could add a second power play goal. Uh, Dylan Fitz uh, had a goal that was scored off a rebound on a Bryson Martin shot. They got disallowed. Uh, it kind of looked like a goal from our standing, you know, from our standpoint, maybe goaltender interference, but even then it didn't look like Perry went down. Um, one of those calls could have gone either way. Unfortunately, it went against the Grizzlies. You know, you think about the power play, it's kind of a work in progress. You know, it's looked like we saw Jacob Semek, the newest Grizzly, who was in his second pro game, who got an assist on that Terran Pfizer power play goal. Looked like he was playing some power play time with that top unit, and they kind of moved James Shearer back. Um, you know, you know, Semek looked pretty good. You know, he didn't see a lot of time in the overtime session, but you know, Semek's somebody that's got a bright future. And really, you think about you know Trent Miner and the job that he did last Saturday against Kansas City, in particular when when the game mattered the most and in overtime, just the big saves they allowed. And I don't recall too many rebounds that he allowed out in front. You know, he did an outstanding job controlling the rebounds, and Trent Miner earns his team leading 12th win of the season. Miner was a wall tonight. He was amazing. Really kept the Grizzlies in this one. I mean, I could I could go on and on about how well Trent Miner played here tonight. But you mentioned Semic. This is a guy that gets signed just a couple days ago, comes into the, a hostile environment in Allen. And I thought, even in the loss last night in tonight's game, he played really well. And I think that's going to be the difference maker for the Grizzlies heading into the playoffs and down the stretch here. You think about last year's run to the Western Conference Final. And yes, you had Ben Tardif, uh, Charlie Rodasto, you had those guys. But one of the big factors in why the Grizzlies went so far is because of the guys that they signed out of college. You think about Johnny Walker, you think about Taron Pfizer. Uh, you know, the, the guys throughout the line, Dakota Raby. I mean, those were big impact guys throughout that playoff run that really made a difference. And so you look at Jared Power and now Jacob Semek, a guy that they just signed out of ASU. I think these guys are going to be really big key parts in the Grizzlies, not only making a push for the playoffs, but making another deep playoff run. I really like what I've seen from those two. I really like the forward depth. I mean, unfortunately, Cam Strong got hurt in the second period. We don't know anything other than he didn't return to the game. Hopefully Cam Strong won't be out of the lineup for too long. Uh, Grizzlies are already without good Fords and Johnny Walker and the rooster Jordan Martell. Martell's missed the last five games, unfortunately, for Walker. It's just kind of been in, in and out of the lineup kind of thing. Uh, but the Grizzlies, four depth. You know, we've talked about, you know, Keaton Jamison stepping up, you know, Dakota Raby, you know, guys like that. I think McCallchuck's played well in this series. You know, he had a good assist in, uh, yesterday, and McCallchuck played well again tonight. You know, Dylan Fitz has really played well over the last month. And really, if the Grizzlies. Uh, want to compete with some of these other teams, whether if they want to compete with Idaho and Allen in the Mountain Division. I mean, those teams are stacked, three forward lines and a good defensive unit. For the Grizzlies, you know, you want to make sure your third line is about as strong as your first line because you don't want that to get exposed come playoff time. And so I think the Grizzlies are really starting to step up in that area of the game as well. It's great to see, Tyson. And you think about the core four for Allen. They were pretty silent tonight. Yeah. And I've been saying it for a while. I think that in the playoffs, if a team finds a way to, to really shut down that core four, they're going to struggle. And we saw that here tonight. The Grizzlies absolutely shut them down. Saucerman, uh, excuse me, not Saucerman, Hargrove, no points. He had six shots. Uh, you think about... Uh, Finley, see, one shot. Finley, one shot. Crone held scoreless. Three shots. And uh, let's see, Combs, four shots, held off the scoreboard. That's how you beat Allen. And let me tell you about the Allen Americans. The core four, they, they rack up all the points. But after that, it's a pretty steep drop-off in terms of depth scoring for Allen. But you look at the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies are a lineup where you don't really have a guy that stands out. I mean, yes, you have Cameron Wright and Taron Pfizer. Those are probably the guys leading the pack. But the drop-off isn't far. There's guys throughout the lineup that are contributing. It seems like on any given night, Anybody throughout the Grizzlies lineup can get you a goal, get you a, an assist, make a key play here or there that will steal you games. And so I think going into the playoffs and down the stretch here, I would rather have what the Grizzlies have with depth throughout all three lines, a solid defensive core, than four key players because it's just not as reliable if you just have that core four. Yeah, and you really, it's tough to stop those guys. And when you look at the stats, you know, I was thinking about one shooter after another in the shootout. It's just like, 
Who was the who was the first guy for Allen? Liam Finley. Look at his stat sheet: twenty nine goals. <laughs> Second shooter: Hank Crum, league leading thirty nine goals. Third shooter: Jack Combs. Oh, he only has thirty one this season. Who would have been the fourth shooter? Probably Colton Hargrove, who's got what thirty three goals. So it's just like it's so those four have been so good. That's really carried Allen to really a spot where they're battling for second place in the division. Um, obviously, they got off to a pretty slow start this year, so they've had to play well just to get to this point. And the Grizzlies got off to a little bit of a slow start themselves, but uh, both teams playing well in the second half. And really, as you mentioned, if you can find a way somehow to slow those four down, uh, you can find a way to win. You know, the, the, the Americans did get a goal from Grant Abers. He made a great play, 141 into the third period. Uh, Fournier and Maleri with the assist. Well, it's another one goal victory for the Grizzlies. Um, you know, I think about Pfizer getting that power play goal 216 in. Utah is now 20 and 5 when scoring first this year. And they are t- they're 13 and 1 when leading after one period. Well, nobody scored after one, but the Grizzlies are now um, 22 and 1 when leading after two periods. This game is scoreless after one period. Taryn Pfizer scored 216 into the second. Grant Abair tied it up 141 into the third. And those penalty kills were huge in overtime. And, you know, I always think that the term character win is overplayed in hockey sometimes. It's it's a cliche that gets used so often. You know, tonight you think about what the Grizzlies had to do to get the two standings points. I don't think it'd be too much to say it was a character win for the Grizzlies. I agree, Tyson. This definitely is, if that term is ever appropriate to be used, was a character win. And you think about the Allen Americans and the Grizzlies this season. Uh, Allen's been giving the Grizzlies fits over the last couple times that they've seen them. They came into Maverick Center, routed the Grizzlies a few times, came back and did the same thing again. So the Grizzlies really struggle with the Americans. But you take a win like this. This not only boosts you in the playoff race, but I mean, this is a huge confidence booster. This is a team that was giving the Grizzlies fits, outscoring them at will. It seems like the Grizzlies could not stop the core four. But now, tonight, the Grizzlies found a way. And if they can take this and run with it, oh, man, it's going to do all sorts of things to this lineup. Guys are going to be oozing with confidence. It's a big win here. The series will be on the line on Sunday afternoon, 1250 pregame show, 105 faceoff. Let's get to the three stars of the game. Number three star is Trent Miner, who stopped 40 of 41. He stopped all eight shots in overtime, and he stopped all three in the shootout. Although, you know, Finley and and uh, Crone both missed the net, and it looked like Combs trying to go low on Miner. But uh, nevertheless, three of three in the shootout. We're not we're not going to downplay it. It was an outstanding performance by Trent Miner in the shootout. But Allen did miss the net on the first two shots of the shootout. Trent Miner was outstanding. Not a shutout. He does have the Grizzlies all time franchise record with nine shutouts, but it is an outstanding performance. As Trent Miner goes to a twelve twelve and two on the season. And he's not 40 of 41. He's the number three star. Number two star is Cameron Wright. who got the game winner in the shootout. Wright had three shots, which is a little bit low for him. He usually averages about four, four and a half shots per game. So Wright gets the game winner. He's the number two star. Number one star, I guess you can have overtime without the Grant Bear game win. Uh, the, uh, the, game, <laughs> the Grant Bear goal. If it wasn't for Bear's goal, I guess Miner would have had a shutout. Grant Bear is the number one star of the game. One, he was a plus one at six shots. He played a good game, but he's he's the number one star tonight. You know, <laughs> I uh, I did a double take when I first saw that. Um, you know, the A Bear goal was huge, and it was a it was a sweet looking goal. I'll give him that. Really went through the Grizzlies defense, beat Miner, great goal. Uh, I would probably have him at the third star right above that, but I think the first star tonight has to be Trent Miner. Yeah. I mean, he he was just lights out here tonight. Played a great game. Um, I think, I think that's where I would put it. So Grant Aber is the number one star tonight. Utah comes away with a two to one victory. Kansas City defeated Wichita five to two. So the Mavericks now have sixty two standings points. They're in second place by themselves. The Grizzlies have sixty one points. They are in third place by themselves. Allen is in fourth place with sixty points. They earned one tonight with the shootout loss, and Wichita. Stays at 59 points. That means that the playoffs start today. Wichita would be on the outside looking in. And your four playoff teams would be Idaho, Kansas City, Utah, and Allen in that exact order. So if the playoffs start tomorrow, Utah would face Kansas City in the first round. And I think the Grizzlies would feel pretty good about that considering they went 7-1 and one against Kansas City this season, winning, all, winning the last seven games after Kansas City won the season series opener 
and Allen when I have to play the Idaho Steelheads. And I think if you're Allen, Kansas City, Utah, I think you want to avoid Idaho in the first round if you can. They've just got such a monumental lead in the Mountain Division. In fact, I think Idaho's clinched the Mountain Division title. Um, they'd be the one seed. I think you know all, all three teams would, would like to play somebody else. I think if you're Utah, they're not going to come out and say it. I'd like. I, I think they want to play Kansas City in the first round if they can help it, and then you know win that series and have some momentum going to the second round if you can get that. Uh, but uh, you know we still got a lot of regular season left to be played. But uh, certainly Grizzlies are headed in the right direction. They've got a standing point in 12 of their last 15 games. And they're now six and one in the month of March. So the Grizzlies are playing good hockey as of late, and they're positioning themselves pretty well. So it's we got ourselves a fun battle for the playoff races. Essentially, we got five teams battling for four spots. Rapid City is trying to be one of those teams right now. Uh, they are early in the third period. Tulsa and Rapid City are tied at three. The Rush are going to have to play well in the last month to join that group in the playoff race. But it's been a lot of fun, and I think uh, the fun thing here, doing some scoreboard watching over the last month of the regular season, is the Grizzlies are playing some meaningful games here in the final month and can't ask for anything more than to play meaningful hockey late in the regular season. That's all that matters at this point in time. Uh yeah, I think you got to be here at Maverick Center to come see it. The Grizzlies are going to be here next weekend against Cincinnati, a Wednesday game against Cincinnati, and then they'll face Wichita. That'll be a crucial series. Now you think about that playoff race as the Wichita Thunder are on the outside looking in, and I think you're right. I think the Grizzlies would welcome a series against Kansas City. They've uh, had good fortunes against them throughout the course of this year, uh, and the Idaho Steelheads are historically good. They're having a, a crazy good season, but you know what? I'll say this. Uh, I think if I'm the Steelheads, I don't want to play the Grizzlies. I don't want to play them because the Grizzlies have played the Steelheads so many times that the Grizzlies have understood the way that the Steelheads work. And oh, by the way, the Grizzlies have found a way to win in Idaho, Idaho Central Arena a few times this season. They might give Idaho a, a scare in the playoffs. So uh, while you definitely want to face a team like Kansas City or Wichita or even Allen in the first round, uh, bring on Idaho. I like the way the Grizzlies are playing right now. And it's certainly be a lot of fun, although if the playoffs start today, which obviously it does, and it's really stupid to say, oh, if the playoffs start today, well, it doesn't, of course. But, you know, Utah had faced Kansas City in the first round. Uh, Kansas City would have home ice advantage, but the Grizzlies have proven they can win over at Cable Dahmer Arena. Well, Utah gets a 2-1 to one victory. Uh, Guy, any final thoughts as we head out tonight? You know, Taron Pfizer now has a goal in four straight games uh, for the Grizzlies. Uh, you know, I think about, you know, the, the strong month of, March and the Grizzlies have done it on the road. You know, they're three and one on the road in the month of March, and they've got a standing point in eight of their last nine road games. So it's not just here at Maverick Center, the Grizzlies taking care of business away from home. It's the March of the Grizzlies, Tyson. They're playing great. And uh, oh, by the way, it's St. Patrick's Day. Luck was on the Grizzlies side here tonight. You know, I'll tell you what, Allen made a fatal mistake here tonight. They were wearing specialty jerseys and they wore green. Now, normally that would be a good thing on St. Patrick's Day, but I'll tell you what. Green is a Grizzlies color. The Grizzlies <laughs> wear professional green. This is not Grizzlies, professional. Why well, my shade of green? The Grizzlies get the win here tonight. Grizzlies are cooking up something special. Between Grizzmania and that other line you used just there, I mean, you're coming up with some beauties here. The, was it the March of the Grizzlies? March of the Grizzlies. And oh, by the way, I got more uh, ready here for the playoff run. So don't go anywhere. Stick here with us and see this thing through. Hey, Grizz Mania is alive and well here at Maverick Center as we're hanging out in the lobby. Grizzlies come away with a 2-1 to one victory, and they're in third place by themselves in the Mountain Division. Well, Sunday's going to be a huge one. I know there's a lot of sports and entertainment options out there, but we appreciate you choosing the Grizzlies tonight. It was a big-time sports upset as the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson defeated first seed Purdue. It's the second time a 16 seed has defeated a one. Not necessarily that big of an upset, you know, over at, uh, Credit Union of Texas Event Center, but the Grizzlies come away with a two to one victory, and they got it done on the shoulders of Trent Miner, who stopped 40 of 41 in all three in the shootout. And Cameron Wright, what he did, <laughs> leads the league in game winning goals. It's not officially going to be listed as a game winning goal, but it is the shootout game winner for Cameron Wright. Guy, any final thoughts before we go out watch some basketball? What a wild one. I think we got to check our blood pressure and maybe our pants. That, that gave me quite a scare there in, the, in overtime in the shootout, but the Grizzlies prevail, no doubt about it. I'm excited for what the future holds here. My blood pressure is never good. My pants seem to be good right now. <laughs> That's good. Well, the Grizzlies come away with two standings points. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Uh, you know, even though we did have to deal with the mercy of the Flow Sports feed, 
knock on wood, it actually was pretty good tonight. I don't know what I did. I just changed an internet court. Hey, that might have been the game changer. I don't know. We'll come back Sunday afternoon and play the rubber match as Utah looking to win two out of three games over in Allen. Once again, in two hours and 47 minutes and in front of a good crowd of 4,602, 4,602 over in Allen, Texas, the Utah Grizzlies got a great performance from Trent Miner. He stopped 40 of 41, and Cameron Wright got the game winner in the shootout. And Taryn Pfizer now has a goal in four straight games. Next broadcast will be Sunday afternoon, 12.50 pregame show, 105 faceoff, and Guy and I will be here in the Maverick Center lobby to call all the action. For Guy Carenza, I'm Tyson Whiting, and it is what it is.